two and an unbelievable game here tonight and the Broncos come out on top 44-41. They even their season record at two and two. They are one and oh in the WAC and their WAC win streak now pushed up to 27 games, Tom. Well, there were about uh, six or 700 people here from uh, Boise and they will never forget what they saw. The players went down and exchanged congratulations and uh, it's been quite a scene in rainy Honolulu. Again, the Broncos win 44-41 from Honolulu. This has been an exclusive sports presentation of Boise State University and seven sports. Good night, everybody. After two difficult road losses to start the year, the men in blue return home and show the nation that they are still a team to be reckoned with. Now, the Broncos put a 26-game whack win streak on the line to open conference play. That record streak started four years ago at Hawaii. Tonight, the streak comes full circle as June Jones and the Warriors welcome the Broncos to Aloha Stadium. It's a showdown on the islands, and it's next. The blue and orange are coming your way. Seven Sports brings you Boise State University Bronco football. Welcome to Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, the Boise State Broncos with their conference opener tonight against the homestanding Hawaii Warriors and Aloha from Hawaii, everyone. David Augusto alongside Tom Scott tonight. And Tom, after that early season setback at Georgia, the Broncos have been forced to adjust their goals. The BCS dream went out the window early. Now they're squarely focused on a fourth straight WAC title, and it starts tonight. And David, who's to say they can't do it? They've won 26 straight WAC games, a conference record. Uh, they're in Hawaii a very difficult place to play with the travel and the distractions and tonight some rain but they know how to do this they do indeed and as far as some individual players to watch a really good matchup at quarterback Colt Brennan the reigning whack offensive player of the week and Jared Zabransky after the nightmare at Georgia has really played a lot better and really came close to putting it together for the first time against Bowling Green well they really really like what Colt Brennan is doing here at the successor to the great Timmy Chang in the run and shoot he's picked up the offense playing with poise and directing this offense in in a great way. Jared Zabransky, uh, on the other hand, after the awful first half at Georgia, he made great strides at Oregon State, further strides last week against Bowling Green, and he has to take that next step tonight. And Tom, you mentioned the Broncos know how to win here. So does Dan Hawkins. He's 4-0 as a head coach against Hawaii, 4-0 against June Jones as well. Should be a good one here from Honolulu. We'll be back with the kickoff coming up after this. <laughs> The 2005 VGA Tour on ESPN. The best in the business. VJ, Lefty, Tiger, and the Big Easy face off against each other in the PGA Tour's finest in what promises to be the most competitive season ever. Will one of these superstars prevail or will a new young star emerge? The only prediction is you'll witness the best golf in the world. The 2005 PGA Tour all season long on ESPN. Wednesday, October 12th, Freddie is the ladies' man. You just need to find decent women with some substance. And Chris, the wingman. They, they sound fat. And when they get together. Oh, women who care about the simple things in life. Poor girls. Oh, man. Hi, psycho chick. Brian Green. Hey, you came with a label. And Freddie Prinze Jr. star in Freddie. Series premieres Wednesday, October 12th at 8.30, 7.30 Central, only on ABC. ESPN Radio. Dropping the white flag on game night on ESPN Radio as we enter the final hour. John Simon, along with Freddie Coleman. In five minutes, where are we now in Major League Baseball? Yeah, good point. 
where are we and where the heck are we going? <laughs> we'll try to give you some direction after a busy day on the diamond. Also going to tell you uh, what we should do with Roy Jones and his boxing career. Oh. In 20 minutes, Joe IU didn't have the best of starts to his college season. Mm -hmm. Missed his first 10 passes. Right. Since then, done all right. He's done Not all right. Not so shabby. Had a good game today. We'll, we'll see uh, how he's coming along in, in his own mind in 20 minutes. 25 minutes, we'll hand out some college football game, uh, game balls from this uh, Saturday. I'm here in Honolulu, and we just had the coin flip. The Broncos won, elected to receive. Hawaii will kick off. And they will be defending the south end zone. And, Tom, we got here on Thursday, and it has not been typical Hawaii weather. Overcast, rainy. They had a flash flood a war uh, warning, as you see June Jones there. And the weather going to be a factor. As you see, June Jones, uh, 49 and 32 in his seventh season here at Hawaii, looking for that WAC championship. It was said in the paper that uh, the Broncos are what June Jones had envisioned for his program. Dan Hawkins, 45 and 9 in his fifth season at Boise State. And Dan Hawkins has uh, won every game he's coached against Hawaii, 4 and 0. And Colt Brennan, we talked about him. He's the sophomore. He was a redshirt freshman at Colorado in 2003. Went the JC route last year and has looked great. Six touchdowns, one interception this year. Broncos lead the series 4-2. to two. Uh, They lost the first two, have won the last four, and, of course, the famous last meeting in Broncos Stadium last October, 69-3, to three, a game that Hawaii very much wants to avenge tonight. So we are ready for some football tonight. Dan Kelly will be kicking off for the Warriors from Temecula, California, back to receive for the Broncos. It looks like it's going to be Quinton Jones and Lee Marks. Of course, he had the big return against Bowling Green a week and a half ago. Quinton Jones, one of the best uh, returners in the conference at over 31 yards a game. Not raining right now, David, but it looks like uh, over the Ko'olau's uh, to our east. It looks like the, the clouds are hanging and wanted, wanting to make a return visit. And it has been uh, dark and cloudy all day. As I mentioned, they had a, flat, a flash flush flood warning earlier today. And here we go, Dan Kelly, and we are underway from Honolulu. Quinton Jones gets it at his own four-yard line. And he is brought down quickly. And that is number 58, John Finotti on the stop. So the Broncos are going to start at their own 21-yard line on offense with their first possession here tonight. And a pretty decent crowd. Looks like a late arriving crowd. They're expecting uh, 30 to 35,000. The stadium capacity is 50,000 here at Aloha. And a good contingent of Bronco fans on hand. Jared Zabransky leading the Bronco offense. Uh, he has four interceptions this season, but none since the first half at Georgia. First and 10 Broncos at their own 21. And that's Jeff Carpenter on the first carry. And it looks like it's a fumble. Let's see if he's down, and I think they're going to rule he was down. And he was indeed, so the Broncos retain possession. No gain. It'll be second and 10 at the 21. Warriors coming in, fired up here. There you see Tanavasa Moe, the leader of the linebacking corps. Here's the starting lineup. First up front, a talented offensive line with a lot of experience. Looks like we have Ryan Keating in at right tackle. There are the backs and receivers. Lee Marks. The start at running back, and here it is, six, second and ten. Zabransky looking for runes, got leg ado, but a little bit outside and incomplete. That's going to bring down, bring up third down. Pressure coming from the top. Zabransky rolled out of it and had leg ado. Nane wide open. There's the uh, Hawaii uh, defensive line as they have the Jerry Glanville 3-4. Uh, Kila Kamaka Weva Ole is the key linebacker there, and uh, the secondary led by Landon Confensitz and Lono Manners. Kila Kamaka Vivo Ole, the reigning defensive player of the week. Third and nine for the Broncos, and they've got two receivers to each side. This is Abransky. He's got Dryzen James at the 30, and that is not gonna be enough for a first down, ridden out of bounds. By Hawaii, number 24, Kenny Patton. So it looks like that's going to bring up a fourth down for the Broncos. James' fifth catch of the year. Really, that was the only way that pass could, could be completed. James running it out and coming back. 
for the ball, and they're, they're going to take time out, apparently, to measure, although. Looks like it's close, but I think they're going to stop and have. Broncos thought they got it, but it looks like they're going to want to measure it. Looks like with the forward progress, they got a pretty good spot ahead of the 30, so let's take a look and see what we got here. The Warriors got a stop on the Broncos on the first possession last year, and then the floodgates opened. I don't They'd think they'd love to stop them here. I don't think they got it, Tom. Oh, it's a half yard short. Half yard short, so this is going to bring up fourth and inches. And we have no Kyle Stringer on the field. So it looks like the Broncos are going to go with an early gamble, and obviously Dan Hawkins comfortable going for it on fourth down, but early in the game, and they are backed up on their own 30. This is still, this is Hawk ball. This is the way he plays it. And Are, there aren't many coaches in the country that would do this, but they have total confidence in their ability to get the first with a half yard to go. And they are one and four on fourth down this year. And here we go, not even a minute into the game. We have fourth and inches for the Broncos. Lee marks the lone setback, and it's the sneak. And he Zabransky pushes ahead, and they move the chains. Zabranski on second effort brought the uh, Broncos up to the line in a hurry quick snap and a nice surge by the right side of the offensive line and you know what Dan Hawkins he has confidence in the guys up front as you see there they move the pile and with the experience they have up front clearly Dan Hawkins showing these guys you know what I believe in you guys let's go get it done Jeff Cavender and Tad Miller and Pete Cavender got that done First and 10 at the 31 for the Broncos. This is Antoine Carter, big hole, up ahead about a 13 yard gain. He's brought down by number 15, Lono Manners, and the Broncos move the chains again with a big burst by Antoine Carter. The Broncos would love to control the ball on the ground. You know what they did last year with 425 yards rushing? Look at that great seal there, he off right tackle. Antoine, a load coming out of the backfield, built low to the ground. So it's first and 10 Broncos. They're at their own 44-yard line. That's Ian Johnson on the carry. He's got some space, but there is a flag down. Big gain, about 15 yards, but we got to check the penalty. It looked like nose tackle Michael Lafayette made contact with uh, Pete Cavender or Jeff Cavender before the ball was snapped. And you are correct, Tom, offsides, and the the they're going to decline down. it. And the result of the play was a 14-yard gain by redshirt freshman Ian Johnson. And he leads the Broncos on the ground this year, has been a great player as a freshman, 32 carries for 208 yards. So first and 10 for the Broncos. They are now in Hawaii territory at the 43. Lee Marks back in the game at running back. And... Zabransky on the rollout to Rab, and that's going to be complete gain of about eight yards. Now they're saying he didn't have control. Dan Hawkins was there helping uh, the official make that call, and now they rule it incomplete. Hawk clapping at the end of the play. Hawk was right there clapping. Let's take a look. Looks like the ball may have hit the ground. It was at the bottom of the screen. Looks like the ball may have hit the ground. At any rate, all academic second and 10 for the Broncos. Gerard Rabb, the junior conference, tra uh, junior college transfer, leading the Broncos in receiving this year. So that brings up second and 10. Broncos at the Hawaii 43. And looks like we've got movement on the right side. Ryan Keating jumped, so that's going to back him up five yards. Ryan Clady, a uh, normal starter at right tackle, missed the game last week against Bowling Green. Uh, he is uh, dressed and available tonight, but Keating getting the start. So that's going to bring up second and 15. Ball moved back to the Hawaii 47. And June Jones there, big game for Hawaii. They've been talking about it all week. They want to get this streak snapped. Broncos coming in with 26 straight in the whack, and Zabransky in shotgun formation on second and 15. And he's going to keep it, turn it upfield. Gets it out to across the 40, close to the 39. Nice little spin move by Zabransky that time. He didn't have to get it all back on one play. They had Ryan Putnam and Derek Schumann stacked, a couple of tight ends stacked on the top side. Schumann comes across. You'll see him come across, and... Uh, 
be a pulling tight end in effect. And that looked like it was a run for Zabransky all the way. So now we're going to have third down and about seven for the Broncos. Zabransky in the shotgun. Pressure, and he's brought down by Kila Kamakavivole. Kamakaviva Ole, the WAC Defensive Player of the Week for his job in Idaho last week in the 24 to nothing shutout. That was uh, more of a cover check. The, the Broncos did a great job initially of picking up the blitz. Great job by Jeff Carpenter, but Kamakaviva Ole comes untouched. And he's going to be a factor all night long. He's got speed off the edge, and so the Broncos go for it on fourth down earlier in this drive with inches to go here, fourth and 16, Bronco's gonna punt it away, but we do have a whistle on the field. Flag thrown all the way back where the Hawaii punt returners stand. On the receiving team, 12 men on the field, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. So they get a five yard penalty for too many men on the field, however, not going to be enough to really be a factor for the Broncos. Now that's going to make it fourth and 12. Kyle Stringer on to punt it away. They have a protector back there for the punt returner. Stringer gets it away. And they're going to let it bounce. And it takes a Bronco bounce. And they down it inside the five, but it looks like the Bronco touched it up uh, along the 10-yard line. Beanbag, beanbag was thrown at the 10-yard line where the ball was touched. So we're scoreless from Hawaii. 0-0, Broncos and Warriors. Are you... The word is out. ESPN Classic is putting two critically acclaimed sports comedies back to back. Oh, baby! It's time to get excited. Because ESPN Classic is pairing new episodes of Cheap Seats with classic episodes of Arliss. Pretty bold move. Well, we're a pretty bold network. Stop it, stop it, please. Get ready for a full hour of comedy, ESPN Classic style. Premieres Monday, October 3rd at 10 Eastern. Only on ESPN Classic. Classic, yes. My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just a perfect day. This is your typical Sunday in Green Bay. Crickets. Things were a lot busier when everybody's racing to get to the game. That's probably a citation. Looks like Schutze found himself a Sunday steak out there. A criminal could pick this town clean when the Packers are playing. Well, if it weren't for me. Let's move along there, fella. Probably a Bears fan. The top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. Did his inexperienced quarterback let him down? The uh, sophomore from Irvine, California, J.C. transfers from uh, Saddleback College. Key stat here, it doesn't show, but he has completed 72% of his passes. And the Warriors are going to throw it a lot, folks. Here's Brennan. Get some heat. He can run. He's to the 20. And takes it out of bounds at the 26, and that's going to move the chains right out of the bat. Hawaii going to have a first and 10 at their own 26, and that's what makes him so dangerous, Tom. He's played very well in the pocket throwing, but he also has that mobility. And he's, he seems to be a better runner than Timmy, Chang's, uh, Timmy Chang was. Here's the offensive line, one of the best in the WAC. Danu Peresa is uh, key there. We'll see if he did indeed get the start last uh, after last week's injury. The receivers all new for the Warriors this year. Four starters left from graduation from last year's team. So here we go, first and 10 for Hawaii at their own 26. This is Brennan, he's got heat from Guerrero, and he finds number 82, Ross Dickerson, 
And it looks like that's gonna be another first down for the Warriors, brought down there by Orlando Skandrick, the freshman. Here's the starters for the Broncos on the line, a veteran line led by Alex Guerrero. The really uh, emerged as a leader. Brooks Hall and Berrios will have pass responsibilities tonight. In the secondary, Broncos have actually opened in the nickel. Orlando Skandrick starting in place of Quentin Jones and Cam Hall uh, starting in the nickel, although he's not in right now. Two plays, two throws, two first downs for Hawaii. This is first and 10, and this is Colt Brennan. He's got Nate Ilawa down the sidelines with speed, takes it all the way down into Bronco territory, out of bounds at the Bronco 43. Not very complicated that time. Alawa coming out of the backfield as Hawaii does so much, uncovered, and gets those uh, short legs motoring down the sideline. Three plays, three first down downs for Hawaii, and they're moving right down the field on their first drive. They've got first and 10 at the Bronco 43. Brennan back in the shotgun. Ilawa in the backfield. Brennan to Ryan Grice Mullen. Another good gain. He gets it out to the 35. Gain of seven. That'll bring up second down. Just the possession passing game. As you see, uh, the average there for uh, Ryan Grice Mullen, 10.8 yards per catch, and shows that it is a short yardage uh, focus for the Warriors. And he is only a freshman. Four receivers graduated from last year, including Chad Owens. He was really the go-to guy, but not really missing a beat here on the first drive of the game. Second and three from the Bronco 35. Double receivers to the bottom of your screen. This is Brennan. He's got time and he's gonna run. Gets ahead, stopped by Corey Hall and that's gonna be close to a first down. Looks like he got it. They'll spot it at the 31 and it's first and 10 Warriors. And there you see Colt Brennan, 20 rushes this season, 35 yards so he can move it. Some big gains here tonight already. Nice first drive here by the Warriors that started at their own 10, 59 yards so far. Bronco defense. A little bit on their heels here as Hawaii marching it down the field. First and 10 at the Bronco 31. Trips to the bottom of your screen. This is Brennan. There that time by Dickerson and a timing pattern. It was thrown on the money, but a great close that time by Alexander. And you see there Gerald Alexander, he's a junior. You may recall he was number 18 last year, switched to number two. His favorite number is 12, but that is retired. Jim McMillan, the great quarterback, that number's retired in his honor, so he chose either one or two and went with two, Gerald Alexander. And it is the only number retired at Boise State. Second and 10 for Hawaii. Triple receivers to the bottom of your screen. This is Brennan again. He's loose and he's brought down. Looks like it's Colt Brooks getting them with the shoestring tackle. They've been clearing out the linebackers on these routes, and that's what's given Brennan so much room underneath. That time, Colt Brooks stays at home and is able to uh, get his arms around the ankles of Colt Brennan. And Colt Brooks uh, missed the Georgia game, but has been a key player since coming back with Oregon State and Bowling Green, 13 tackles in those two games and one sack. Looks like we uh, have a timeout. Hawaii wants to talk about it as they have a third and seven coming up. It is scoreless here in the first quarter from Honolulu.
Gear up for the gridiron with your favorite NFL and college football apparel at ESPNShop.com. You want it? We've got it. From clothes to cleats and everything in between. So as you get ready for the new season, gear up at ESPNShop.com or call 1-800-762-1701 for a free catalog. Please rise for our couple Spurs fans as Husband and Wife. on this drive. Here we go. Third and seven for Hawaii. Colt Brennan in the shotgun. Double receivers to the right. This is Brennan and a shovel pass to Ilawa and he breaks it for a big gain and that's going to be a first down. He takes it all the way down to the 15. And a late flag comes in. That was a very late flag and it could have been maybe a late hit. Let's take a look. That was a great call against a Bronco Blitz from the left side. And that was the senior, Nate Alawa, on the shovel from Brennan. Here's the penalty. After the play was over, late hit, number 64, personal foul, 15-yard penalty, still at the first down. Huge penalty in Boise State's favor. That nullifies a first down deep in Boise State territory. Let's take a look again. It's a late hit from Hawaii. There's Ilawa. Play and over there it is right there. Samson Satele. So that is a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the, after the play, so they back it up, so it's now first down. They do maintain the first down and it's at the Bronco 29. Hawaii, this is Ilawa, breaks loose for about a six yard gain and he's brought down by Chris Berrios, the senior. Well, they're getting some use out of Ilawa, the senior. 5'9", 248, how about them apples? Ilawa did not play last week at Idaho. At Michigan State, he carried nine times for 76 yards and had a 41-yarder against the Spartans. He is a load, and he's shifty and fast. Very difficult player to bring down. So now we have second and about three for Hawaii. Brennan in the shotgun. And the give is to Ilawa again, and he breaks it loose. Cam Hall trying to bring him down, and he gets inside the 20-yard line. Austin Smith and... Marty Tadman. Marty Tadman in on the tackle. Also Mike G. Williams there on the stop, but not before another Hawaii first down. Hawaii's running the ball a lot more than usual tonight. A little shotgun draw to Alawa. Breaks the tackle of Cam Hall. And then Williams and Tadman have to finish him off, but uh, the Warriors are knocking on the door. And what's going on here, Tom? They only rushed for 41 yards last week against Idaho. Here, Ilawa with some big gains. Brennan in the shotgun, first and 10. Triple receivers to the right, he goes left. And there's some contact there, and there is no flag thrown. That is incomplete, and the crowd letting the refs have it. Boy, Alexander backed off at the last moment. Uh, no call. No call there. A little contact, but let's take a look here. That went a little bit quick. A little bit ticky-tacky, I suppose. Pretty good call. Pretty good call. <laughs> Gerald Alexander with good defense there, and it's going to bring up second and 10 for the Warriors there at the Boise State 17. 
And again, they've moved the ball 11 plays, 77 yards on this drive. Two receivers to the top of your screen. This is Brennan. He's got time over the middle, and it's incomplete. Good Number co five, Michael Washington there. Good coverage that time by Gerald Alexander. So Brennan had to try to get it up over the top to Washington, a true freshman. The four receivers in the starting lineup for Hawaii, three of them are freshmen, two of them true freshmen. Michael Washington at the X and uh, Devon Bess at the Y. So here we go, Hawaii nine times in the red zone. They've scored six touchdowns this season in those nine trips. Here they have third and 10, big down for the Bronco defense. At the Bronco 17, triple receivers to the top of your screen, Brennan in the shotgun. He fires to the right and overthrows his man, and it's incomplete, and it looks like the Broncos are going to force a field goal. Orlando Skandrick saying that he was interfered with. He got turned around on the play, but the ball was out of the reach of Dickerson. Ross Dickerson, a junior, one of the more experienced guys coming in. Ian Sample was a senior. He's injured and out, so... Hawaii going with some youth at wide receiver. So this brings up a field goal opportunity. They're going to mark it just outside the 20, so it's going to be about a 27, 28-yard field goal attempt. And this is Dan Kelly. It's up, and it is good. He converts, and Hawaii on the board first, 3 nothing, leading the Broncos here from Honolulu. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. ESPN Fantasy Football is so easy to use. Yeah, and it doesn't require a major time commitment. And we love the camaraderie it engenders. The way we're talking is so weird. This room and our clothes. Brandy, Randy, Candy, I don't think we exist. What, what do, do you mean, mean, Sandy? I think we're just part of some guy's fantasy, and whoever he is, he obviously loves ESPN Fantasy Football, and we're just icing on the cake. Ooh, oh. there's cake? <laughs> ESPN Fantasy Football. Play for free at ESPN.com slash fantasy football. A great sportscaster once promised to tell it like it is. Not quite. Because first you have to tell it like it was. Every weeknight, Classic Now will take breaking sports news and give it to you with a deep perspective and backstory from yesterday to today and back. All in one show. I'm Josh Elliott. Join me for Classic Now, where the past is always present. 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic Now. One of college football's most celebrated coaches. One of ESPNU's most insightful shows. Now they're joining forces. Coaching legend Lou Holtz joins ADT College Coaches Spotlight, covering the week that was and the week ahead in college football. I'm here because of the fans. With all the breakdowns and press conferences. There are no neutral observers on this game. Lou Holtz joins ADT College Coaches Spotlight, Tuesdays at a new time, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN News. The president's a massive stroke. The vice president assumes the presidency. Why do you want to be president? The answer is that you want the power to control the universe. That's not me. Well, that's the problem. People who don't want power have no idea how to use it when they have it. I want you to resign. I'm going to run this government. Gina Davis, Donald Sutherland, Commander-in-Chief, premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, followed by the season premiere of Boston Legal, only on ABC. Yard field goal from that man, Dan Kelly. And Tom, Hawaii scored first last year. It was 3-0, Broncos 69 unanswered. So let's see what happens. I'm not thinking it's going to be quite like that tonight. Kelly with the kickoff, and it looks like Quentin Jones is the man on the return. He's got some blockers. And he's ahead close to the 20-yard line. Brought down there by number 22, Lamar Broadway. Little scuffling going on on the field. Well, the goal when you uh, take a ball out of the end zone like that is to reach the 20, and Quinton came up uh, one yard short. And you saw some scuffling. Very big game for Hawaii. They are, as they put it, tired of the whack bully. <laughs> And they're showing it right there with a little scuffle. And I think when you have a team like the Broncos that have dominated this conference, clearly they're going to have a bullseye every time they play. That goes without saying. Actually, uh, Jones did make it to the 20. So it's first and 10 Broncos. Lee Marks in the backfield. 
Derek Schumann, the man in motion, split now wide to the top of your screen. This is Zabranski. Wants Rab, and Rab turned around a little bit, and it's incomplete. I don't think Rab saw the ball. Zabranski needed to put a little bit better touch on it, but Rab did not see the flight of the ball. And there was pressure on Z. The, the play is a fade to Rab, and it worked so well for a couple of touchdowns at Oregon State, but Z getting pressured there from the Hawaii defense. Tanavasa Moe putting the hit on Jared Zabransky. Pressure also coming from Brad Kalili Moku. And that brings up second and 10 for the Broncos at their own 20. And this is Ian Johnson. He's got a little room ahead past the 25. That's going to be a gain of about six or seven yards. I like the way Ian Johnson runs, averaging 6.4 yards a carry coming into tonight's game, still looking for his first touchdown and still looking for his first 100-yard game. We may be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but we know that is going to happen for that guy. And part of that is the Broncos did come into the season with a committee at running back, and uh, in a lot of ways they're still doing that with Lee Marks and Jeff Carpenter now in the ball game for the Broncos. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen. It is... Third and three for the Broncos. Zabransky overthrows Dryzen James, and it's incomplete. Zabransky throwing on the run a lot tonight. That ball floated on him well out of the reach of Dryzen James. It would have been a first down. So that's going to bring up fourth down, fourth and three at the Bronco 27, and they're not going to mess around with this one. Dan Hawkins punting it away with Kyle Stringer back there, the all-whack performer from a season ago. He's averaging 42.9 yards a kick this year. Andre Taylor back to receive for Hawaii. With a personal protector. Stringer gets it away. Towards the sideline, a short kick for Stringer standards. Looks like it came out at about the Hawaii 43. Stringer coming into the game with a 43-yard average. That's affected a little bit by that kick as Hawaii is set up in great field position at its own 43-yard line. And now, if you're Ron Collins and uh, the Bronco defense, you got to figure a way to stop Hawaii. Not only are they throwing it, we knew they were going to do that, but they've run very effectively. They've got 40 yards on the ground so far tonight. They had 41 all of last game against Idaho. Now they're going to make some adjustments against the run here. So we have first and 10 at the Hawaii 43. Colt Brennan in the shotgun. And he wants Ryan Grice Mullen, and it's incomplete. That's going to bring up a six uh, second down. Grice Mullen working against Austin Smith, and he was open. 17 catches coming into tonight's game. So it's going to be second down for June Jones and the Warriors. Less than six minutes to go here in the first quarter from Honolulu. Boy, the Warriors lost a great group of receivers last year that included Chad Owens, Jason Rivers, and Britton Comine. But in this system, you don't have a lot of responsibility for each receiver so they can move him in quickly. Here's second and 10 for the Warriors. And he gets his man up to get it is number 83. That is Jordan Sly, the junior, 6'4", and he goes up to get that pass and it's gonna be a first down for the Warriors. Good protection that time for Brennan. He was looking one way. Overthrew it, but the 6-4 height <laughs> made a lot of difference on that play. And there Orlando Skandrick and Cole Brooks there for the uh, Broncos. And so the Warriors move the chains again. First and 10, they're in Bronco territory at the 46. Triple receivers to the top of your screen. And Brennan can't handle the snap, but collects it, goes deep. And we've got contact. And no flag, Gerald Alexander on the coverage, and it looked like incidental contact. The crowd doesn't like it, but a good call. Key there was that Alexander read the eyes of Michael Dickerson and Alex Guerrero down on the field, read the eyes of Michael Washington, turned around to follow the flight of the ball, and he was going for the ball. So there was contact as the ball was coming down. And he was going for the football all the way, and you have to be able to let the defender play the ball. But we do have 
a development on the field. Alex Guerrero slow to get up and looking at his right knee or ankle and, and this would hurt because Guerrero has emerged as such a defensive leader in 2005. And he is the anchor of that defense and really having a career year for him and that's saying a lot. The senior obviously has been around for a while, played in a lot of big games, 11 tackles, three sacks so far this year and this is a good sign, Tom. Not only coming off under his own power but uh, running off the injury. That is a very good sign and uh, we'll monitor that situation as uh, Alex comes off the field. And if uh, I know Alex as well as I think I know him, I think he's going to be back out there pretty soon. But well, Mike Dominguez will come on to replace him. That will move Nick Schleckaway to the inside. Schleckaway moved to defensive end before the season started. Has been very effective there. Schleckaway back at his original defensive tackle position in place of Guerrero, the uh, sophomore from Eagle. So that's going to bring up a second and 10. Hawaii, second drive of the game at the Bronco 46. Triple receivers to the top. This is Colt Brennan. Little time. Keeps his feet, and we got a flag on the field, but Brennan is loose, lets it fly. And Devon Betts cannot hang on to the ball. Good coverage there by Corey Hall from his linebacker position. And we've got a flag on the field, and let's take a look. June Jones wants a call for kicking. It's illegal procedure against Hawaii. June Jones thought that Brennan was illegally kicked on that play, and he's complaining to the officials on the far side. Devon Bess, who had such a, a great game last week, could not, uh, almost made a great catch on that play, but could not hang on. And June Jones is livid. Tom, he was out on the field illegal about formation 15. On the offense, only six men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is refused. They'll take the result of the play. Third down. So there was the call from the ref, June Jones Livet. He came out on the field about 15 feet onto the field. And there's the pass to Devon Bess, and the freshman probably wishes he had that one back. Coverage there by Marty Tadman. Marty Tadman with a great hit at the end of the play to knock the ball loose. All right, so that's going to bring up third and 10 for the Bronco, for the Hawaii Warriors at the Bronco 46. This is Bess in motion. Two receivers split to either side. Brennan. It's the inside screen, and Bess can only get it down to the 40, a gain of about six, and the Broncos hold on third down. Great job by Corey Hall of forcing that play inside where Andrew Browning was waiting to make the stop. So this is going to be interesting. The Broncos already gambled on fourth down. Warriors going to have about fourth and a long three here. And it looks like June Jones is going to want to punt it away and play field position. Kurt Milne on to punt for the Warriors. He has a 37-yard average. And Austin Smith deep for the Broncos. And the Broncos haven't been their usual stellar selves on the punt return game, but that's in part due to situational things. We'll get into that later. This is Austin Smith, and he muffs the catch. And fortunately for the Broncos, it goes out of bounds at their own 22, and they are going to retain possession. And Tom, we were talking to Dan Hawkins yesterday, and he was talking about how critical it is for his punt returners to hang on to the ball. Chris Carr, of course, last year, now in the NFL. North Turner of the Raiders saying he's got the best hands of any player he's ever coached. And Hawkins prides himself in that, and Austin Smith here just hesitated a moment. He misjudged it. It was a very high kick, misjudged it, and the Broncos are very fortunate to have this ball. So first and 10 at the Bronco 23. Zabransky gives to Marks. He's got room, and he plows ahead close to a first down past the 36, and it looks like it might be enough, and they do move the chains. First down Broncos. Marks with a big gain on the ground. First carry tonight for Lee Marks coming in with 154 yards and a touchdown as Ian Johnson has been getting a lot of work at tailback. Antoine Carter's been in, Jeff Carpenter. First carry for the senior from Rosita, California. Four minutes to go here in the first quarter from Honolulu. Second and first and 10 Broncos. And this is Jeff Carpenter, no room. Gonna be a loss of about three. And he is brought down by number 91, Ikaika Alama Francis, the junior. Alama Francis, a versatile athlete, played nine games for the Hawaii basketball team in 2002. Very interesting for a defensive tackle at 
six six, uh, rather six five and two fifteen. Very slender, but he's got speed and shows that he can get to the quarterback and into the backfield there. Second and about 11 for the Broncos. Zabransky in the shotgun. Hawaii shows blitz. This is Zabransky away to Jason Murray. Big gain out to midfield, and that's a first down Broncos. Jerry Glanville mixing up the blitz looks, and Zabransky unfazed by that. Jason Murray running a great route on the cross and uh, Zabransky really needed that completion. He was one for five for eight yards before that play. So the Broncos moving it here on their own 49, first and 10. Carpenter back in the backfield for the Broncos. Jason Murray in motion. This is Carpenter and he's gonna pass back to Zabransky and Zabransky looking deep. He has Derek Schumann and he can't hold on to the ball. That is one of those Chris Peterson wrinkles. And it was set up perfectly. Schumann cannot believe that he did not make that catch. You ask where has Derek Schumann been? They've had stuff drawn up for him. It just situationally hasn't worked out. And we were talking to tight ends coach Brian Harson, and they do have plays designed for him. And clearly this was to shoe all the way, the pitch to Carpenter, and then he throws it back to Zabransky. Puts it out there. There it is. Oh, a little well, bit over the right shoulder, but I'm sure Shu would like to have that one back. We may never see that again. Second and ten Broncos. They're at their own 49. The play or the drop. <laughs> Gerard Rab in motion. Z looking deep. This is Rab. He can't hang on to it. Good coverage there by number 24, Kenny Patton for Hawaii. Very similar play to uh, Alexander's stop on the last drive. Kenny Patton going up and playing bat ball with Gerard Rabb. Rabb with the great leaping ability wasn't able to pull that down. So that's going to bring up a third down for the Broncos. They're 0 for 3 tonight on third downs. This is a big one. They're at midfield. Zabransky in the shotgun. Z pressured, he fumbles the ball. They're gonna call it a fumble and Hawaii recovers. And it is Warrior football. Number 43, Brad Kalilimoku in on the play for the Warriors. Let's take a look, let's make sure it wasn't forward motion. And who forces it? Kila Kamakawiwa Ole. And 40 who else? And Brad Kalilimoku on the coverage, and there's the speed from Kamaka Vivovole. And the Broncos turn it over on third down. Zabransky's been faulted for a lot of fumbles this year. You can't really fault him for that one as he was trying to bring his arm forward. They ruled that it came out before the uh, motion was forward, and Hawaii set up at the Bronco 45. Broncos now minus eight in turnovers this year, first and 10 for the Warriors. And there's that shovel pass again to Ilawa. Gain of about three out to the 43. As the Warriors now with the first quarter winding down in Bronco territory once again. Bronco defense has brought things back to the middle now after seeing that first drive by Hawaii and, and the way the middle of the field had opened up for them. June Jones winding this game in the worst way as he is 0 for 4 against Dan Hawkins and uh, 1 for 4 against Boise State. So it's going to bring up second and seven for Hawaii. Triple receivers to the bottom of your screen. Colt Brennan in the shotgun. Gets it away. And this is Bryce Mullen. Tiptoes down the sidelines. Puts on a move and is inside the 10. Ryan Bryce Mullen. Brought down by Marty Tadman. And that a big gain for Hawaii. The tackle that Austin Smith makes nine out of ten times and has to make. Austin off to a, a rough start in tonight's game. A great tiptoe job by Grice Mullen. That's as good as it gets there. And Hawaii doing a great job of mixing the run and the pass. And they have receivers that know what to do with the ball after they catch it. As you see Grice Mullen there inside the ten. That's going to make it first and goal for the uh, Hawaii Warriors. Grice has been great out in the flats tonight. 
They are just inside the 10-yard line. This is Brennan. Has some time and almost picked off in the end zone by the Broncos. Marty Tadman had his hands on it. He threw it into double coverage that time as Tadman, as a safety, was coming over to play, well, we'll call that right field. And Tadman, the sophomore, has played so well. He was forced into action last year when Chris Carr went down and burned his red shirt year, but got quality game experience a year ago, played in the Liberty Bowl, and he has been a tremendous factor this year for the Broncos. He comes in to the game with 22 tackles. That is third on the team so far this year. Second and goal for Hawaii, just inside their 10. This is Brennan, overthrows his man. Incomplete, that'll bring, down, bring up third down for Hawaii. And that was style again. Jordan, Jeremy. Jordan Sly, he stopped it. He stopped his route. It looked like Brennan wanted to, to go to the corner, but uh, Sly stopped his route at the goal line, and Alexander was the only one who had a chance at it. So third and goal tonight, one and three on third down for June Jones and Hawaii. They are just inside the 10. Call it third and nine. Broncos would love to get out of this one with only three. And they spread it out, three receivers to the top. This is Brennan. To the right side, he's got a man, and that's Devon Best for the touchdown, Hawaii. Well, we talked about the uh, Bronco linebackers having pass responsibilities tonight. Colt Brooks isolated on Devon Best. Devon Best just went up high and grabbed that thing out of the air. Great athlete, true freshman. Dan Kelly in for the PAT. It's up, it's away, and it is good. Hawaii with seven more on the board. 10-0 here in the first quarter. And take another look. Colt Brennan's been in shotgun all night and he gets a lot of time and he finds his man. He didn't even have to, uh, best wide open, didn't even, even have to throw a fade on that one. That was more of a, a rope over the top and a great leap by Bess to come down with that. He had two touchdowns last week, another tonight, and that's his fourth of the season. And Tom, I don't think we can overemphasize how big a game this is for Hawaii. We've heard it all week since we arrived here on the island on Thursday. They understand that Boise State's the dominant team, and they know that if they want to accomplish the things they want to get done as far as competing in this conference and competing for a bowl game here in Oahu, they need to win this game. Well, obviously, with a 26-game winning streak, every team in the WAC wants to be the first one. They want to be the team to end it. And Hawaii's the first one to get a shot this year as this is the Broncos' WAC opener. So the Broncos down here. In the first quarter, they trail 10-0. Hawaii out on top early. And Dan Kelly set to kick it off. And once again, Quentin Jones. And it looks like Lee Marks back there as well for the Broncos. Kelly gets it away. And this is Quentin Jones at the five. He's got some blockers. Gets it out close to the 30, so the Broncos will start with good field position here with 1.16 to go in the first quarter, and it looks like not quite out to the 30. Well, it's about the 30, Tom. He's been getting good spots all night. Look at the numbers for Jared Zabransky, 2 of 8 for 24 yards. It's going to have to improve from that if the Broncos are going to win this game tonight, but it is still very early. Uh, even today, we have seen the strangest things happen. Michigan State coming back, ultimately losing to Michigan, and of course USC. Oh, absolutely. Un Tough one for Dirk Cutter down there in Tempe. This is first and 10 for the Broncos. Ian Johnson shifts to the backfield, and he's got the ball, and he's got no room, no gain, maybe a loss of one. Brought down by number 91, and that is Ikaika Alama Francis. Johnson has the bil uh, ability to do a lot by himself, but not when it's just him against four black shirts. 98, Malila Purcell 
also in on the stop, and that's going to bring up second down, and it's going to be second and ten for the Broncos. Jerry Glanville roaming the Hawaii sideline and liking what he sees from his defense so far, his 3-4. Second and 10 at the Bronco 30. This is Ian Johnson. Cuts it back and gets ahead past the 35. Nice gain for the freshman. Nice little Brock Forsey type hesitation that time by Johnson. As the, uh, the, the Warriors had their defensive line stacked to the left and then had a linebacker blitzing from the right and he picked his uh, way through the middle. And so I think that's going to wind it down as we wrap up the first quarter of play here from Honolulu. And the Broncos find themselves down 10 to nothing to the homestanding Hawaii Warriors. They've been here before. Broncos can come back. We'll see what happens in the second quarter. Yankee shortstops, I definitely put him ahead of Scooter and Corsetti. Yeah, his limited power drags down his OPS a little, but he's still one of the most clutch hitters of all time. Whoa. He turns that mean 6-4-3, and he's got the soft hands of Hannes Wagner, and even Boston fans call him Captain Intangible. How do you know he has soft hands? Classic Metal with host Josh Elliott, 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic now. Brothers and sisters. See you later. This is for the win. The old guard. <laughs> and the next generation. Go deep now. Got it. College football is family. ABC is your home. A once-storied high school football team looks to return to their celebrated past. For one season, NFL legend Dick Butkus becomes head coach. If you don't have it inside you, I don't know what to do. Can his discipline... I can't coach you, losers. ...and determination... You've got to believe that we're going to win. ...be the life lessons they need to return the team to glory. Bye -bye. Bound for glory. A new reality series, Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. and this is Abransky on the keeper, and he's loose and gets it all the way past midfield down to the Hawaii 46. A little shoving going on, brought down by number 98 for Hawaii, and that is Malila Purcell. Big gain for Zabransky. A patented Zabransky option here. Never thought about tossing it as Brad Lau was right at his side. And the... Uh, Broncos get it into Hawaii territory at the 46. Big conversion for the Broncos here in the second quarter. They're down 10-0. First and 10 at the Hawaii 46. Ian Johnson in the backfield gets it away to Jason Murray. And he gets up to the 40, a gain of about six. That'll bring up second down. Broncos will take that on first down anytime. Jason Murray, who's really a part of the game plan tonight, Seldom used senior until the end of last year. 
at his first career touchdown. Uh, really kind of a game-clinching touchdown at Nevada last November. And just another of those um, multifaceted weapons in Chris Peterson's offense. Second and four at the Hawaii 40-yard line. The give is to Ian Johnson, cuts it back, and he's ahead with the first down past the 35, takes it to the Hawaii 34. Ian Johnson becoming more and more a factor for the Broncos as a freshman. Great vision that time by Ian Johnson as Lolo Manners, the safety, was in the backfield in a hurry. You'll see him on the right side of your screen. And a great block on him by Brad Lau as Johnson gets the Bronco first down. So the Broncos move the chains. It's first and 10. The man in motion is Cole Clayson. The give is to Ian Johnson against stutter step. Another big gain out to the 32. And that's going to be a gain of about seven for Johnson as the Broncos now settling in to a rhythm and moving it. And they're taking it right up the middle as Johnson gets a breather. And Johnson leading the Broncos in rushing tonight. Five carries for 34 yards for the freshman from Southern California. And that's going to bring up a second and five. Gain of five there for Johnson. The man in motion is Jared Hunter. And play action. This is Zabranski to Derek Schumann, and it's picked off. Lono Manners coming out of nowhere to grab it, and another turnover for the Broncos. And Schumann is beside himself. Coach Dan Hawkins talking to him right now on the sideline, trying to get him back within himself. Schumann ripped his helmet off after that play. And Manners closed very quickly on this ball. Schumann wide open. The ball could have used a little bit more touch, but Schumann, Schumann knew that was a touchdown waiting to happen. Maybe he feels he should have come back on the ball more or knocked it out, but he is very upset on the sidelines. So the Broncos a little frustrated here in the early going. They've had their way with the Warriors the last four times they've met. They've won four in a row against Hawaii, including two straight here in Honolulu. There you see Hawkins talking to Schumann. The calming effect. So it's going to be first and ten for the Warriors, and they're going to talk about it. Their second time out of the game. And Hawaii here looking to put more points on the board. They're backed up in their own end, and they lead 10-0. J'aime le fromage. J'aime le fromage. End of tape 12. Guys ready? Let's do this. ESPN College Game Day. Built by the Home Depot. Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. From Walt Disney Pictures, based on the amazing true story. Did you hear about the caddy playing in the open? You're a caddy. I can do this. Critics are calling it the greatest game ever played. One of the year's best films. He's just trying to make you proud. It's a movie for everyone who ever had a dream. What's that carrying his bag? A pygmy? You got a problem? Walt Disney Pictures presents... That's President Taft. How you doing there, Mr. President? The greatest game ever played, based on a true story. Easy peasy, let me squeeze. Rated PG, in theater September 30th. their own 19. This is Colt Brennan. He's got lots of time. Flushed out. And he's looking and he's running. 
And a big hit by the freshman Orlando Skandrick, but not before Brennan picks up eight yards. Once again, that left side of the field completely cleared out as the routes took the Bronco uh, secondary deep. Linebackers were stuck in the middle with you. And here's the hit again, and we're gonna let you hear it as well. Orlando Skandrick. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was so, it was so, it was such a hard hit, it kind of took the sound out. At the speed of sound. <laughs> You'll just have to imagine. That. Orlando Skandrick, though, as a true freshman, playing a big role in the Bronco defense. Second and two for Hawaii. This is Brennan. Over the middle, tip, and it's picked off. Corey Hall with the ball. And he's brought down at the Hawaii 24, and a big turnover there for Hawaii as the Broncos now have some life. Fourth career interception for Corey Hall. The other three were you know when against Oregon State last year. And all three of those against the Beavers were tip balls. And Corey just has a nose for tip balls as he gathers it in. And the Broncos are in business inside the 25 of Hawaii. And there it is again. Look at that effort by Alex Guerrero to get his hands on the ball. I believe it was Alex. And boy, the Broncos needed that one and he leads the team with 24 ta 25 tackles as it is first and 10 for the Broncos. This is Ian Johnson looking for space. Gets it ahead to the 21, a gain of about two or three. That was also the first interception of the season yes, by Boise Tom. State four games into the year. The first pick, and it comes on a tip ball, but I'm sure Corey Hall, Ron Collins, and Dan Hawkins will take it any way they can get it. They are now back down to minus seven in the turnover ratio. It's gonna bring up second and seven for the Broncos. Lee Marks back in the game at running back and the give is to Marks. A little shake and bake and he takes it down to the 17. Uh, there's a guy who has great vision. Was that a quick burst or what He's by Lee so Marks? He's so shifty. He's built low to the ground. He goes about 5'7". Came in as a cornerback, switch a running back, and he's really blossomed as a guy that can get you some tough yardage. Another wholesale personnel change, as Boise State is wont to do on this third down, and the rain is starting to come down in the proverbial buckets here at Aloha Stadium. Here we go, third and three for the Broncos. Cole Clayson in motion, the give is to Ian Johnson, and it is a fumble. Broncos put it on the ground again. And Hawaii comes up with it. Low, low manners again. With a big hit. And it looks like 94 came up with the ball. And or Mel, Mel Purcell. And Ian Johnson, just a big hit by Manners. And that was 98, Malila Purcell with the recovery. And so after a Corey Hall interception, the Broncos put it on the ground and Hawaii takes over first and 10 at their own 14. Broncos are actually back to minus nine in turnovers for the season. They are minus two tonight. Two fumbles and an interception versus the one pick that they have. So Brennan brings them up in a driving rainstorm here in the tropics. First and 10 at the Hawaii 14. This is Brennan, another shovel to Ilawa. Inside, brought down by Corey Hall. A gain of about three. Chris Berrios also there. They've got that figured out now, it looks like. Some adjustments made by the Bronco defensive staff. And so the Broncos scoreless here as we are nine and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Wholesale and defensive changes now as Tim Bolt comes on on the defensive line. And Alex Guerrero has not returned since going out of the game in the first quarter. It is second and seven for Hawaii. Colt Brennan, the handoff inside. Ilawa stopped at the 20. Gain of about two. Chris Berrios on the stop, along with Tim Volk. We have not seen much of Tim Volk this season. The 6'2", 260-pound junior and transfer uh, uh, who played at one time at the University of Arizona, and there you get a good look at Chris Barrios. And I'm looking on the sidelines to see if I can find Alex Guerrero. 
can't spot him. It's going to bring up uh, third down and four for the Warriors. They're two for four tonight on third down, 50%. Guerrero is standing on the sideline. Another timeout by Hawaii. That's their third in this half. So they will not have any more timeouts with 8.30 to go in the second quarter. Boise State trails 10-0. Sundays, when your game is over, switch over to ESPN News for interviews, news conferences, and complete post-game analysis. It was the right play at the right time. The Blitz, Sundays, 4 to 10 p.m. And Mondays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday Quarterback, presented by Coors Light. You see the character of this football team. A complete wrap-up of the NFL week that was. When he gets you, he's going to hurt you. The Blitz, Sundays, 4 to 10 p.m. And Monday Quarterback, presented by Coors Light, Mondays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., only on ESPN News. against each other in the PGA Tour's finest in what promises to be the most competitive season ever. Will one of these superstars prevail or will a new young star emerge? The only prediction is you'll witness the best golf in the world. The 2005 PGA Tour all season long on ESPN. Wednesday, October 12th, Freddie is the ladies' man. You just need to find decent women with some substance. And Chris, the wingman. They, they sound fat. And when they get together. Oh, no, women who care about the simple things in life. Poor girls. Oh, man. Hi, psycho chick. Brian Green. Hey, you came with a label. And Freddie Prinze Jr. star in Freddie. Series premiere Wednesday, October 12th at 830, 730 Central, only on ABC. there for uh, yardage and Hawaii on top 169 yards they've been moving the ball they have, there's the critical turno uh, turnover number there Hawaii 20 penalty yards so far tonight so that backs them up it's going to be third and nine for Hawaii they're at their own 15 this is Brennan. Another give inside to Ilawa. And there's a flag on the play. He gets it out to the 20. Let's take a look. Andrew Browning may have been held on that play. And that's what Andrew Browning thinks. He's signaling that way. And that is the call. Derek Fa'avi, the captain, the center, looks like the man who is guilty of the infraction. So he's out to the 20. If they decline the penalty, it'll bring up fourth and four. And let's take a look. Holding. On the offense, number 59, that penalty is declined. Result of the play, fourth down. And so Hawkins elects to decline it. It's going to bring up fourth down. And deep for the Broncos now will be Quinton Jones. He will get his first chance as a punt returner. Dan Hawkins indicated to us yesterday that this might happen. This is not necessarily because of the drop by Austin Smith on the last punt return. And we have a punt. It's away, and it's a good one. Quinton back to his 30-yard line. Putting on the moves and can't find any space. Brought down by number 91, Ikaika Alama Francis. And Quinton Jones, in practice, had to catch 30 consecutive balls to merit getting on the field. Coach it, Hawkins, very, very specific about his players catching the ball on a punt return. It's crucial to them that they not drop the ball. That's what was so ironic about yes. Austin Smith dropping that last punt is that it, it, on the second punt return of the game, Quentin Jones was probably going to get a shot. It just so happens that Austin Smith dropped it on the first one. And when but we in, in practice, he, he did, as you said, Dave, have to string together 30 consecutive catches of punts to earn this opportunity. So here you go. Bronco's going to try again. And it's first and 10 at their own 34. Cole Clayson in motion. 
Zabranski back. There's it out. Clayson gathers it in, and he's got a big gainer bumped out of bounds at the Hawaii 37. Big gain for the Broncos, nearly 20 yards down the field, and they are in business again in Warrior territory. Well, he shows that uh, he is a good fit at BSU. He's, he is a role player as part of the receiver rotation. He caught the longest pass of the year by the Broncos at uh, Oregon State, the school from which he transferred. This is a nice throw by Zabransky, putting it, splitting the zone between Kenny Patton and Lolo Manners. So let's see if the Broncos can close the deal here. They've been down here before with opportunities to score and have not gotten on the board. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Broncos at the Hawaii 34-yard line. Zabransky back to pass again, has time. Up top, Legadu Nanane cannot bring it down. Coverage there by number 35, Heo Monte of Hawaii, and it's going to bring up second down. Heo Monte went over the top. Legadu wishing he had pulled that ball in a little more quickly because the ball hit off his hands and was battable. Yes, it was, and it... Nice play action, nice block there by Ian Johnson. As you see the pressure on Zabransky. So that's gonna bring up a second and 10. Ball on the Hawaii 34. Jarrett in the shotgun, back to pass. He's got pressure and goes down. Brought down by number 41, Solomon Elamimian. He almost kept his feet, and he had a lot of green in front of him on the right side, but Elamimian makes the tackle, brother of former all-whack uh, corner, Abraham Elamimian. And uh, Abraham graduated last year. Got a shot with the Chargers along with Gabe Franklin. So that is a loss of two. It's going to be third and 12. Ball now at the Hawaii 36-yard line. Third down for the Broncos and 12 to go as the rain continues to fall. Legadu Nane in motion. This is Zabransky. Has time. Placing up and can't come down with it. Coverage once again by number 35, Kael Monte. And the Broncos now are facing a fourth and 12. They're at an interesting spot on the field at the 40, uh, 37, but they are going to bring Kyle Stringer on. Zabransky now four of 13 with an interception for 62 yards. Wow. So Hawkins here electing to pin Hawaii back and play the field position game. Kyle Stringer at midfield. Gets it away. A little bit too far. Might go into the end zone a little far. And Kyle, a little too much on that one, and it's going to be a touchback. Hawaii is going to start at their own 20 with 6.53 to go here in the second quarter from Honolulu. And Hawaii out to a fast start. They lead 10-0 over the three-time defending WAC champion Broncos. Up. The word is out. ESPN Classic is putting two critically acclaimed sports comedies back to back. Oh, baby! It's time to get excited because ESPN Classic is pairing new episodes of Cheap Seats with classic episodes of Arliss. Pretty bold move. Well, we're a pretty bold network. Stop it, stop it, please. Get ready for a full hour of comedy, ESPN Classic style. Premieres Monday, October 3rd at 10 Eastern. Only on ESPN Classic. Classic, yes. <laughs> My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us is to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just a perfect day. This is your typical Sunday in Green Bay. Crickets. Things were a lot busier when everybody's racing to get to the game. That's probably a citation. Looks like Schutze found himself a Sunday steak out there. 
A criminal could pick this town clean when the Packers are playing. Well, if it weren't for me. Let's move along there, fella. Probably a Bears fan. The top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. Did his inexperienced quarterback let him down? Nice people, but not the kind of people who train heavyweight champion boxers. And did the death of Buster's mother motivate him to fight the perfect fight? Spurred him on to train as he's never trained before. I was in that zone, that zone. It was just my time. They've been mixing the run in the pass, and here's Brennan. Pressure from the Broncos. He goes up top. Nobody home. Overthrow. Somebody must have cut <laughs> off a route somewhere because there was nobody within 10 yards of Marty Tadman. Well, it must have been Michael Washington who cut off the route because Marty Tadman was the only guy in the neighborhood. There you see, after that three for four start on the, four, uh, on the first drive, Cole Brennan cooled off a little bit. He's 9 of 20 now. The Broncos, interestingly enough, uh, Alex Guerrero back in the game, but the Broncos have a three-man front. They've been going with the three-man front on the last two series, and right now it's Mike T. Williams and Andrew Browning and Alex Guerrero. June Jones, as we mentioned, 0-4 against Dan Hawkins, and it is second and 10 at the 20 for the Warriors. Alex Guerrero with pressure from behind. Cole Brennan, no room, and he gets it away and somehow finds his man, 82. Ross Dickerson. Wow. First down, Warriors. And Cole Brennan with some serious heat coming from Alex Guerrero. Alex, the good news, he looks like he's back to normal after going out of the game in the first quarter. Pressure by Guerrero, and look at the change of direction here by Brennan. He buys himself a little bit of time. Looked like he was throwing it away, really, and Alexander looked like he was going to have a chance at it. And but that it flips through into the arms of Dickerson. That is good for a first down, and it's first and 10 Warriors there at their own 32. That is Grice Mullen in motion. Brennan looked for the screen, it looked like, and he's just simply going to throw it away. And I don't think he got it to the line of scrimmage, Tom. When you're out of the that's, tackle that's, box, you have to pass that ball up to the line of scrimmage or it's intentional grounding, and I think that's what the coaches are saying. That's exactly what the uh, coaches are appealing. And they are the head, the head, head linesman is uh, is waving that off, but uh, it was clearly behind the down mark. But I think, Tom, that imaginary line extends all the way up into the stands, and if the ball makes it to that line, <laughs> the way I understand it, they won't flag you for it, which is extremely bizarre, but nonetheless, they do not get penalized, and that brings up a second and 10. Triple receivers to the top of your screen. Brennan. And it's picked. Marty Tadman the other way. He's at the 20. Nice move. 10. Touchdown, Broncos. And that's the spark the Broncos needed. Marty Tadman with the pick and the momentum turning score for the Broncos. That was a momentum turner. Both of Marty Tadman's picks, uh, and a terrible decision by Colt Brennan to throw that ball. Should have thrown it higher. Great run here by Marty Tadman. Both of his career interceptions have come against Hawaii. This one bigger than the last. And that was a 40-yard return for the touchdown. Broncos back in business here in Honolulu. The point after now from Anthony Montgomery. Kyle Stringer on the hold. It's up and it's through. And the Broncos cut the lead to three. They're back in this in a big way with six minutes to go until halftime. It's now Hawaii 10 and the Broncos 7.
football season is back. Gear up for the gridiron with your favorite NFL and college football apparel at ESPNshop.com. You want it? We've got it. From clothes to cleats and everything in between. So as you get ready for the new season, gear up at ESPNshop.com or call 1-800-762-1701 for a free catalog. Please rise for our couple of Spurs fans as husband and wife. This is Kyle Stringer with the kickoff. It bounces and doesn't go out of bounds. And this is... He's loose. Andre Taylor. Andre Taylor on the return. That and was almost disaster for Hawaii as it was a live ball. Taylor was able to reverse his field. Sometimes when you have that happen, the coverage overruns the kick. And that's exactly what happened in this case. The and ball ba bounced back toward the middle of the field. Put his foot out of bounds there. And I'm surprised that ball was not downed at the time he touched it since he went out of bounds. Flag should have been thrown on that. You would think so. But as it is, it's going to be first and 10 for Hawaii. They are at their own 26. Triple receivers to the top once again. This is Brennan. In the flat, hit hard there by Austin Jones. That was Bryce Mullen. And we have a penalty marker on the ground. It's on the near side of the field away from the play. That's a late flag. Uh, no biggie. <laughs> Sideline warning on Boise State. Oh, okay. I think Hawkins is livid because Andre Taylor on that return, when you step out of bounds and you come back and touch the ball, it should have been down, so that's a potential, potentially why Hawkins is a little hot there and got the sideline warning. All right, we got first, or second and 10, excuse me, for Hawaii. They are now still at their own 26. Triple receivers to the top. Brennan throws it right. And Ross Dickerson hauls it in for a gain of about seven. Not enough room to turn it upfield in front of Gerald, Ger Gerald Alexander. The Broncos uh, definitely have some, some momentum switching over to their side now at long last. And you know, the Broncos have turned it over a couple of times. They haven't been playing their best football. Derek Schumann dropped the pass. Jared Zabransky on a couple of passes, not perfect with the delivery, and they're still only three down with 5.44 to go in the half. Third and four for Hawaii. This is Brennan. Over the middle, and Bryce Mullen comes down with it right at the first down marker, and it looks like it's gonna be enough. Depends on where they put it. Bryce Mullen is down. Looks like it did move the chains, but Bryce Mullen still on the turf. And Hawaii with brand new field turf this year, installed by the NFL. Of course, the annual Pro Bowl is played here every February. And here's the look at Grice Mullen coming down hard. You know, he may, he may have just come down on the ball. Maybe a wind It situation. looks that way because it didn't look like any of his limbs were in a vulnerable situation. But again, uh, Tom, uh, this turf really looks great, and it's a big improvement because they have a baseball diamond here. And Dan Hawkins telling us on Friday that in years past, the turf here, the uh, home plate and the base areas were like a trampoline and very dangerous. The second base area, which is down around the 30-yard line on the other side of the field, was, was very, very bouncy with the old turf. Now it's a, a lot more solid. But... Uh, the NFL did not want to play the Pro Bowl on that no. old Astro Turf field anymore, so they financed the uh, new field. You turf. can imagine Paul Tagliabu cringing, not wanting any players to get injured in an All-Star game, and Bryce Mullen up and uh, walking off under his own power, and it does look, Tom, like he maybe got the wind knocked out of him. 
As June Jones talks to Colt Brennan, 11 for 25 now, or rather 12 for 26 after that completion to Grice Mullen, 138 yards. Brennan had not thrown a pick since the first series against USC on opening day until tonight. Now he has two. And Hawaii nearing 200 yards to, in total offense with still five and a half minutes to go here in the first half. And one of the big numbers is uh, rushing. They've got 59 on the ground. They only carried it for 41 total against Idaho. It's going to be first and 10 for Hawaii. They're at their own 37. Blitz coming. Brennan flushed out, gets away, and he's got a receiver. Devon Best comes down with it. He's down at the 35 of the Broncos. And Colt Brennan burning the Broncos again on the move. Devon Best slippery and acrobatic, and he showed it on this play. You'll see Mike Dominguez with a piece of his jersey gathered there. And then a great rollout by Brennan throwing on the run and just popping it over. Nice touch on the, on the run, a very nice touch pass to Devon Best. And that's a killer for the defense, Tom. They bring the blitz. They get close, they flush him, and he burns you for a first down. Colt Brooks coming full speed. He was picked up well. And then Chris Berrios left to give chase. So first and 10, Hawaii at the Bronco 33. This is Brennan again. Lots of time. Over the middle, he's got a man. Coverage there by Orlando Skandrick, incomplete. And he had him there for a moment. That Jordan Sly again, he's getting a lot of playing time tonight. Here's the coverage again, Orlando Skandrick, a true freshman coming over the top, timing it perfectly, and uh, the coaches love this young man from Los Alamitos High School, a true freshman, Tom. His good buddy from Los Alamitos, Jeremy Childs, redshirting this year. It was a tough decision for uh, Childs to redshirt. He could have played this year, but wouldn't have had the chances that he is going to have down the line for Boise State. So after the incompletion, second and 10 for Hawaii, and we got a whistle on the field, flag. It would be delay a game. So that's gonna push him back. That's exactly what it is, Tom. That's gonna push him back. It's gonna make it second and 15. And Tom, going back to Orlando Skandrick and Jeremy Childs out of Los Alamitos. Broncos, a little bit of a pipeline. Quinton Jones from that high school. Mike Sanford Jr., the backup quarterback over the last few years, now graduated, also from Los Al's. Very, very good high school program down there in California. Second and 15 for Hawaii. They're at the Bronco 34. This is Brennan. And a big hit on the receiver. Was it too early? Oh, and a late flag coming. That was at least a three or four second count after the play when the flag comes out. And Coach Hawkins cannot believe it. Hawkins face. Going for the ball all the way. Marty Tadman. One, he's going for the ball, so pretty clean play but two really I think even more concerning that it came so late and a mock smile from Dan Hawkins is he's not believing it and so that is going to be an automatic first down for Hawaii ball now at the Bronco 29 yard line after the Broncos had snatched the momentum with the Marty Tadman interception for a touchdown the Warriors on the march they've got triple receivers to the bottom of your screen Broncos show blitz Brennan away, it's incomplete, almost intercepted by Marty Tadman on the tip. That was Gerald Alexander on coverage. I'm impressed by the way Colt Brennan stands in there against the Blitz, and I really do think he does a better job of that than Timmy Chang did last year. I really think he has more poise than Chang did. As good as Chang was, he would unravel at times. In fact, the last time the Broncos played here, he didn't start the game. It was Jason Wielden two years ago because he was coming off a poor performance. Second and 10, Hawaii, triple receivers again. Colt Brennan has been in the shotgun all night long. Here he is. He's got a man, turns it upfield. Not enough for the first down. He's about a yard short, and that is Michael Washington. So the Broncos now going to be facing a third and short. And the Broncos continuing to go with that three-man front. They're bringing alternately 
linebackers, safeties, or corners in as a fourth man to disguise the look. And just as I say that, they are in a four-man front. Big down here for the Broncos. <laughs> it's gonna be third and one, Hawaii. Broncos looking to hold here and force a field goal. Triple receivers to the bottom. They're spreading it out. They've been doing it all night long. This is Brennan. Heat by Schleck away. Gets through the crack. And he is not going to get the first down. Decision time here for June Jones. He'll be about a yard and just about a yard short of the first down. Fourth and one at the 20. And I think they're going to kick it. And the crowd wants him to go for it. But Coach Jones realizing he's in a battle here and points might be a premium. Fortunately for Dan Kelly, the rain has stopped for the time being here in Aloha Stadium. Looks like a 38-yard attempt. Dan Kelly, two of three this year. His long is 44. He's connected once already this year. It's away. And it is good. Hawaii, three more points on the board. They now lead 13 to seven with 343 to go in the half. You know, the uh, interception for a touchdown by Marty Tadman, if that had happened a year ago, it, it may have taken a, a toll on, on it on Timmy Chang, but uh, that, that is a great answer by Colt Brennan. And you know, Hawaii, they struggled in their first two games, but really they were playing two of the better teams in the nation, USC and Michigan State. They put it together in Moscow a week ago and uh, showing us a lot here in the first half. And as you mentioned, Colt Brennan looking very good. And this is his first season here at Hawaii. He redshirted at Colorado in 2003, lit it up in the junior college ranks at Saddleback College last year. He was Gerard Rabb's teammate. And uh, here he is at Hawaii making the most of his opportunity. And he's led the Warriors to 235 yards against the Broncos here in the first half. So here we go. Warriors set to kick it off. Quinton Jones and Lee Marks back for the Broncos. This is Dan Kelly set to kick off for the Warriors. And it is away. Looks like it's going to be Quinton Jones at the goal line. And he's brought down hard. We got a flag on the play. Let's see what the flag is. And that was number nine on the stop, Ryan Keomaka out of Honolulu, Hawaii, the sophomore. So marginal field position here will get worse for Boise State. Holding on the receiving team, number 28. 10-yard penalty for the end of the kick. First down. Rashad Richards, the freshman with the hold. And that's going to push the Broncos back. Inside their own 10 with three and a half minutes to work with here in the first half. The running game has been decent, but not terribly consistent. Five yards a carry, though. 19 carries, 85 yards for the Broncos. Broncos only 62 passing yards so far tonight. This is Zabranski. The give is to Jeff Carpenter. And he can only get about a yard, if that. Big pile there on the sideline. It's a great job by Carpenter to get back to the line of scrimmage and get a little bit out of it. He got a couple yards. The senior from CUNA who earned a scholarship after the Fort Worth Bowl when he caught the 54-yard touchdown pass that got the Broncos back into the game that night in Fort Worth. And he's a player that there's other players on the team with more speed, maybe more athletic ability, but he is a gamer. All right, that brings up second and nine. Broncos, Zabranski in trouble in his own end zone, throws it away, and he gets it past the line of scrimmage. He was out of the tackle box. That's going to be incomplete, and it's going to bring down, bring up third down, and Zabranski with some serious heat there. Lucky to get that one away. Fortunately, Dryson James was in the neighborhood over on the far side. Because the Hawaii bench was going crazy on that one. And it looks like he may he probably got it to the line of scrimmage anyway. The key there is if he's out of the tackle box, you have to throw it at least to the line of scrimmage. If you're in, you got to get it close to a receiver. The Broncos could really use one first down here. 
We've got third and nine Broncos backed up at their own 11. That's Schumann in motion. Jared Zabranski in the shotgun. Warriors bring the heat, and Jared looking for some room. Only gets it out to the 17. That's going to be short of a first down. And that will bring on Kyle Stringer. Zabranski electing not to turn that one upfield. Too many black shirts there. So the frustrations continue for Jared Zabranski and Coach Dan Hawkins here in Honolulu. Kyle Stringer into kick. The ball is at the Bronco 18-yard line. Back deep is Andre Taylor. This is Stringer. Taylor muffs the punt, and the Looks ball like the is on the ground. Hawaii retains oh. possession. There's still a scrum down there. The referee indicated yeah, he's Hawaii. Already, he's already called it. He's already called it. Uh, but they're still looking. And Josh Bean down there. They, they, they can't, they can't turn this one over. They can't. It looks like the Broncos had it, but they can't reverse that call. The referee indicated it was Hawaii ball, and there was still a large scrum. Here's Andre Taylor. Two muff punts in this game so far. There's Josh Bean, number Josh. 56, at the bottom. And it looks at that point like Bean has it. And the Broncos are in a battle here tonight, folks. Hawaii ball. 2.31 to go here in the first half. First and 10, Hawaii at their own 44-yard line. This is Colt Brennan. Flushed out. He can run. And he's out at midfield, chased out by the senior, Chris Berrios. Six-yard scramble on first down for Brennan. Six carries, 38 yards now for the J.C. transfer. And look at that. On the ground, Brennan two yards shy of the total rushing output for the team in their win against Idaho a week ago. They'll take that six yards on first down any day. day of the week. Second and four. The Warriors now have it at midfield. Receivers two on top, two on the bottom. This is Brennan. Lots of time. Heat from Hall, and Hall forces the bounce pass. Big hit on Brennan coming from Corey Hall. Hit as he throws, and he was shaking his right hand a little bit as he got up on that. Broncos now back to a, a three-man front and then bringing a fourth person from an undetermined location. We've got 2.19 to go here in the first half. Hawaii has come to play. They lead 13-7 in the WAC opener for the Broncos, a 26-game WAC win streak. That's a league record, and it's the longest in the nation on the line tonight. Third and four. This is Brennan, gets it away. That's Bryce Mullen, put the move on. And he's all the way past the 35, down at the 34 of the Broncos. Broncos brought five on that blitz. And that put Bryce Mullen in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Orlando Skandrick. There you see Bryce Mullen in the slot. He actually was matched up with uh, Ellis Powers. Ellis Powers slips so five extra yards. First and 10 at the Bronco 34. This is Brennan loose again, and he's down at the 29. Brought down, it looks like, by Gerald, or make that Ellis Powers in the game, as you mentioned, Tom. Colt Brennan is more like Jared Zabransky than Jared Zabransky tonight. He's looking great, and he kills the clock on second down with 138 to go in the half, and that's going to bring up third down, and um, that's just uh, burning a down right there, Tom. You'd think they'd have a play ready to go. Yeah, they'll, they'll reset the clock here and, and start the 25-second clock in motion. They don't have any timeouts left, so they, I, I guess they felt like they had to stop it with 138 left. Whoa, did, uh, is, is Colt Brennan having a problem with, did he just throw up on the field? Colt Brennan just Boy. threw up on the field. This could be an issue. 
see if that if that affects his head at all. I, I would think it has to have some sort of an effect. He's obviously not feeling well. Colt Brennan over the middle. Devon Betts in the open, and he is in for the touchdown. Devon Betts from Colt Brennan, a 29-yard touchdown. And the Warriors with six more. So much for Colt Brennan and the flu. I guess that's what he needed to do was get it out of his system. He obviously felt a lot better. It's a little pale over there, but uh, we'll put some rose back in your cheeks. 29-yard so touchdown pass to Devon Bess, his second catch of the night and fourth in the last two weeks. So this is Dan Kelly for the point after. It's up and through. And Hawaii grabs a 20 to 7 lead, 10 unanswered after, Bro after the Broncos cut the lead to three. Now this is right after Colt Brennan vomits on the field. Throws a strike to Devon Bess and a great hand catch by Bess. He just turns it inside. There's no hands there for the Broncos. He split those two defenders. A great move back inside. Here's Bess. Broncos in zone. Cuts it inside Austin Smith and he and, he and Orlando Skandrick get, get caught going the wrong way. Bess knew which way he was going. The freshman, big game against Idaho, and he hurts the Broncos here with 1.30 to go in the half. The Broncos down 20 to seven to Hawaii. So the Broncos with 1.30 to go in the half are gonna get the ball again. That's Quinton Jones and Dan Kelly, the man to kick off for Hawaii. Lee Marks also back for the Broncos. The kick is away, and it is out of bounds, and that's going to be a flag, so the Broncos are going to start with great field position. I'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. The Broncos have, had, have not had good field position most of this night, and then they haven't done themselves any favors with turnovers. Third line, first down. The irony here, Tom, the last time the Broncos lost in this stadium, 1999, they were up on Hawaii 19 to 7 at the half. Hawaii leads here 20 to 7. Hawaii back in 99 came back and scored 27 unanswered to win 34 19. So if you're a Bronco fan, and I'm sure there's plenty out there, you're hoping history repeats itself in some fashion, Tom. You can take that to heart. However, uh, the Broncos are in the other guy's house tonight. And uh, it's another guy that really wants to be the one to end the 26-game black winning streak. So it's first and 10 for the Broncos at the their own 35. Zabransky back to pass, goes deep. And it is incomplete. Gerard Rabb with the dive, trying to come up with it, but just a little beyond his reach. Nice throw that time by Jared Zabransky. As we'll see, Rab just stretching out, out just of off reach. the fingertips. Kenny Patton on the coverage for Hawaii. Now the good news is the clock stopped, so the Broncos now with a second and ten. They're at their own 35. That's Ian Johnson in motion in the backfield now, and it's going to be offsides unless the Broncos moved. Well, they're they're trying they to did. get a call on Jeff Cavender. And they did call it on Cavender. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Number 64, five-yard penalty, and they stuck it out. And that was Pete Cavender, the other Cavender, twin brothers from Elko, Nevada. Just a very slight movement. That's all it takes. Yeah. There's the glitch from the center position. Well, it should have been on Jeff Cavender. Yeah, I think they should have yeah. called it on <laughs> Jeff. You were right, Tom. The um, interesting thing about the and as you look at the penalty artists tonight, the interesting thing about the Bronco passing game is it has not really been vertical since Ryan Dinwiddie left. Second and 15 from the Broncos' own 30-yard line. This is Zabransky. 
He's got a man, that's Dryson James, gain of about six. Out of bounds, stops the clock, and now Tom, it's gonna bring up third down, and they've been stopping the clock. There's still 1.19 to go. If they don't convert here, Hawaii an opportunity to come back with some time of their own. Yeah, they, they just don't have any timeouts left. But uh, they're well aware of that. They'd be calling a timeout uh, if the clock were running right now. So it's third and nine for the Broncos. They're at their own 36. Zabranski in the shotgun. Over the middle, he's got a man. Dryson James. And we've got a dead ball whistle before the play. It's coming. All right, the snap. Ball start on the offense. Number 71. Five yard penalty. Still third Ryan Keating, the right tackle there. And that nullifies a potential touchdown. And Dan Hawkins tonight. This will drive driving Dan and Hawkins crazy. and Chris Strasser crazy. False starts, especially on a play like that. And the Broncos are so well known for being a well-coached, disciplined team. And back-to-back -back false starts, not good. DSU one for eight on third downs tonight. Third and 14. This is Zabranski. He's got heat, and he's going to be brought down. Number 91. Ikaika Alama Francis drags Zabranski down from behind, and the Broncos are going to be forced to punt. Zabranski never had a chance. Francis just splitting the seam between Tad Miller, coming up, coming up the gap between Tad Miller and Darren College. And Zabranski sacked again. And the Broncos, 68 passing yards tonight with 40 seconds to go, and they're gonna let this thing run down and then possibly take a timeout is Boise State. And they actually, that's exactly what they do. Timeout, 32 seconds remaining. That's gonna push it, uh, or that's gonna keep it there. Fourth and 14 at their own 31, and the Broncos gonna punt here with Kyle Stringer onto the field. Following up on what I was saying about the uh, Broncos vertical passing game, uh, two years ago with Ryan Dinwiddie, uh, you, you had the 98-yarder to uh, Lawrence Beatty. You had a slew of uh, long passes, one of them from Jared Zabranski to Jerry Smith, uh, the 77-yarder against San Jose State, which is Zabranski's longest career pass. Mm -hmm. Longest pass of the year last year was 53 yards, and that's a, an aspect of the game the Broncos need to get back and want to get back. So here's Kyle Stringer at his own 20, gets it away, great spiraling kick. Fair catch called by Andre Taylor, and it's going to be put down at the 25-yard line, and that's where the Warriors will start with 24 seconds to go and no timeouts. Well, that pass to Dryson James that was called back, that was a vertical pass, and that was nice. It was over the Boise middle, State. and uh, he had some, some running room. So the Broncos... In a real dogfight here, 20 to 7, they trail. And Tyler Gronke in the game, and this is not unusual. He played against Idaho this season. He's got 41 rushing yards, kind of a change of pace guy. Let's see what they do. Trips down at the bottom of your screen. Tyler Gronke into the game. He's a freshman out of Tucson, Arizona. And here he is, and he's going deep. And too deep. Coverage there by Gerald Alexander. And that was Michael Washington, the intended receiver. I guess they figure that Gronke has more range than Cole Brennan. Either that or Brennan just is not feeling well. That's a good point, Tom. After he that did last series. vomit on the field prior to throwing that touchdown pass to Devon Bess. As so, the Warrior, the Hawaiian drums. And that is a staple here at Aloha Stadium. A lot of things about this, uh, this place make it special and unique. So it looks like Hawaii's going to be content to go into the locker room with a 20 to 7 lead. Gronke, the genuflect offense there, and that's going to bring the half to a close. And Hawaii, wait a minute, looks like uh, we got some sort of an issue on the field with the referees. Boise State took a timeout. Took oh, the fans are going to love that. Oh my. Second down. Hawaii was halfway into the locker room 
And Coach Dan Hawkins says, wait a minute. They're <laughs> going to put 16 seconds wait back on the clock. Wait a minute. Let's get back here. Okay, so it's third down. This is interesting, And now, now it forces Hawaii to try to get a first down. Absolutely. Or Broncos can stop them and look for a, a punt return of some sort. So Hawaii and June Jones are going to say, okay, you want us to play? We're going to play. Gronke's in the shotgun, and they're going to go for a first, the inside handoff, and he's not going to get it. Timeout Broncos, 12 seconds. And the clock's still running. You know, from the time they call timeout to the time they stopped the clock, there was a two-second differential. Well, now Hawaii and will... Hawaii... Uh, and they are going to put two seconds on the clock, Tom. Hawaii will punt with Austin Smith back in the game as the returner. Now, hold on. Gronke's in the game. Gronke's in the game, and... Can he eat up those 12 seconds? Hawaii is uh, with 12 seconds. It looks like, you know, they may do the pooch kick here, Tom. Yeah. I mean, they got to. They, they should cannot. Put Marty, in fact, they should back Marty Tadman up about 10 Absolutely. yards. Absolutely. They cannot afford. Well, it's an inside slant, and Ross Dickerson's got room, and he's got the first down, and he's out of bounds at the 46-yard line with four seconds to play. That'll get some yapping going down there between the two teams. And you know, the fans didn't like that. And I think on the surface, it looks like Dan Hawkins, you know, at least the fans took it as Dan Hawkins maybe showing him up a little bit or getting him back here on the field, but he's coaching. Yeah. And he's maximizing the time he's got and the timeouts he's got. Now the fans want Hawaii to go for broke. They are 68, or rather uh, 58 yards away from the end zone. But now the fans are getting excited about it. Hawaii. Four seconds to play here in the first half. And Hawaii first and 10. And let's see what they do. They're at their own 42. Tyler Gronke in at quarterback. They've got triple receivers to the bottom of your screen. Gronke is going to let it fly deep and batted down by Marty Tadman. And we've got a flag on the field, Tom. The half cannot end on a defensive penalty. And a bizarre ending here to this first half. Let's hear what the ref has to say. Illegal shift against Hawaii. And I think that might bring the half to a close. I think this time Hawk's going to say, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Let's Decline. get into halftime. Penalty is declined. That's the end of the first half. So, the Broncos, with a 26-game whack win streak on the line, find themselves down 20-7 to at the half to the homestanding Hawaii Warriors. And don't forget, next Saturday, the Broncos take on the Vikings of Portland State University. Be sure to join us for the complete coverage live from Broncos Stadium. Our telecast begins at 6 p.m. Mountain Time right here on Idaho's News Channel 7. You can also catch the action on KTFT 38 Twin Falls and KSKN Spokane's WB22. And, Tom, as we get ready for kickoff here, the Broncos have a lot of work to do. Well, they... Uh they haven't shown much inertia tonight. You you look at a 20 to 7 game and this team in the past four years. Uh, that's that's nothing. 13 point deficit. That's nothing. But they just haven't shown that spark, that inertia to overcome something like that tonight. And uh, they they definitely seem a little out of sync on offense. Definitely. And I think you got to take your hats off to to Jerry Glanville's defense tonight. I mean, he does have them playing differently. If not that much better, that much harder. They are playing really hard tonight. They are executing their assignments as uh, laid out by Glanville in his 3-4 defense. And even though Jerry Glanville had an 11-year hiatus from coaching, he was a very successful defensive coach in the NFL, was an NFL coach for the Oilers and the Falcons. In fact, when he led the Oilers defense back in the 80s, the Astrodome called the House of Pain. And uh, this has become a house of horrors for the Broncos here in the first half. <laughs> It certainly has. When you look at the uh, the passing yardage at 68 yards in the first half, uh, and it's not like they didn't try to get more. It's not like they were just running the ball in the first half. Five for 16 with for, uh, with an interception for Jared Zabransky. And I think uh, you mentioned it. You got to kind of take your hats off. 
to the Hawaii defense. They were very fired up coming into this game. They want to be the ones to snap the streak. And uh, the Broncos were very focused coming in. Dan Hawkins was feeling very good about his team. Let's see what happens in the second half as we are ready for kickoff. Kyle Stringer going to do the honors for the Broncos. He's the punter and kickoff specialist. As we are ready for second half action from Honolulu. Just have a single uh, deep man back. Is that Andre Taylor? Yes, it is. Stringer kicks it away, and Taylor at the three-yard line. Over to the left side, has a little room, and out beyond the 20-yard line, brought down by Vinny Peretta and Ian Johnson. Johnson, a great recovery after getting pancaked uh, by the, the wedge. He got up to make the tackle. Cole Brennan ready to come back on the field after a, a very odd end to the first half when he vomited on the field and on the next play threw a 29-yard touchdown pass to Devon Best. And sometimes when you're not feeling so good, that could really be a, a big relief, Tom. So a 221-yard first half for the sophomore. Two touchdowns and those two interceptions. So we're, here we go, first and 10 at the Hawaii 22. Brennan passing again, and they come out slinging. That's Ilawa fighting his way close to the 30-yard line, brought down there by Marty Tadman and Chris Berrios. And Tadman had him wrapped up. Very difficult guy to bring down with those huge legs that uh, Nate Ilawa has, 5'9", 248. That is a load. And uh, when you're built that low to the ground, low center of gravity, it is very difficult to bring him down, as you mentioned, Tom. Second and three now. The Warriors with the ball at their own 29. And here we go with Brennan again in the shotgun. They've been doing that exclusively tonight. Gets it away to Ilawa. Shakes and bakes, and he dives ahead for the first down, and that is going to move the chains. Just dink to the left, dink to the right in the run and shoot. And the Warriors keep it going. That is their 16th first down of the night. They are looking very impressive tonight and uh, mixing the run and the pass. And they've been able to run somewhat effectively tonight. And that makes the passing game, the short West Coast type passing game, high percentage passes, very difficult to defend. So it's first and 10 Hawaii. At their own 34. And we've got a whistle before the snap. Got to be on the Warriors. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense, number 82. Ross Five -yard penalty Dickerson remains first down. The wide receiver did getting not, a little anxious. Did not pick that up because it wasn't in the interior line where false starts usually occur. So that's going to push him back five yards. You see the penalties there, pretty even tonight. Five apiece. Just some frustrating false starts on Boise State's part in the second quarter. So it's going to be first and 15 now. The ball now at the Hawaii 29-yard line. Play cock, as you see, down to seven. Triple receivers to the top. Brennan gets it away. Pump and drops the ball. And the ball is on the ground, and it looks like Brennan got back on top of it. And he pumped the ball and lost it. Exactly. It just slipped right out of his hands, bounced in front of him. A great job by Brennan to scoop that thing up because there were Corey Hall was on, on it, uh, Chris Berrios. Could this have been an incomplete pass? It looks like he was bringing it back in, Tom. Let's see it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like now he just say, lost Browning the Browning did not see the ball. Andrew Browning would have had the first shot at it, but he didn't see it. So here we go, second and 14. He did pick up a yard on that fumble. Ball now at the Hawaii 30. Brennan looking right, and that is Michael G. Williams all over him. MG going over the top to give the Broncos their first sack of the night of Cole Brennan. The junior from Lethbridge, Alberta with his first sack of the season, and it is a big one. Pushes Hawaii back and forces a long third down now with 18 yards to go. He just uh, came unblocked. Kala Acera on the left side of the line should have had him. Should have been on him is what I'm trying to say. 
So as I mentioned, that forces third and 18, big down here for the Bronco defense. Triple receivers to the bottom of your screen. Brennan looks right. Lots of time, and he's flushed out by Alex Guerrero. Throws it up and over his intended receiver, and the Broncos hold and force a fourth down. Big stop. Once again, Brennan got out of trouble by backpedaling away from Alex Guerrero, much like he did in the first half. This time, Ross Dickerson not in the right position. And so it brings up fourth down, and our first look, or he's, this is, uh, he's had two punts, Kurt Milne on to punt. Just seems like they haven't punted forever. Gets it away, great punt, pushing Austin Smith back, takes it at the 22. Little room on the sidelines and not much ahead to the 30, a little past the 30. They're gonna mark it at the 30 yard line. Really important that the Broncos get that three and out on the first possession of the second half. And now we'll see if Sobranski can, and the Bronco running game can complement each other and get something going. They need to put a drive together here and uh, send some sort of a statement as they are down 20 to seven in this ball game. It's gonna be first and 10 at the Bronco 30 yard line. And Brad Lau in the backfield. Antoine Carter in the slot. Now he shifts to tail back behind Brad Lau. So here we go, lots of motion for the Bronco offense. As always, Zabransky back to pass over the middle and Schumann with his second drop of the night. I don't know if Dan Hawkins is gonna to wanna to talk to him again. Dan Hawk had to talk to him after the interception in the uh, second quarter to get uh, Schumann mentally back in the game. And yep, he's upset again, Shoe's upset again. Clearly, this is not the, Der the Derek Schumann we've been watching the past two seasons. No, not at all. That brings up second and 10. Broncos once again at their 30 yard line. Double receiver, triple receivers to the bottom. That's Jeff Carpenter in motion. Zabransky, lots of heat, gets it away. Gerard Rabb caught at the 38, and that's a gain of eight yards. Boy, Jerry Glanville that time brought a jailbreak off the right side. There was a wave, a Wyomia Bay type wave headed for Zabransky. He rolled out of trouble, threw on the run, and a nice grab by Rab to give the Broncos third and short. And so here we go, third down, and call it and a long one. Zabransky shaking up a little bit. And so we got a timeout, Broncos timeout. Zabransky gonna think about it. Broncos trail 20 to seven. People listen up, the word is out. ESPN Classic is putting two critically acclaimed sports comedies back to back. Oh, baby! It's time to get excited, because ESPN Classic is pairing new episodes of Cheap Seats with classic episodes of Arliss. Pretty bold move. Well, we're a pretty bold network. Stop it, stop it, please. Get ready for a full hour of comedy, ESPN Classic style. Premieres Monday, October 3rd at 10 Eastern, only on ESPN Classic. Classic, yes. My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us is to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just the perfect day. This is your typical Sunday in Green Bay. Crickets. Things were a lot busier when everybody's racing to get to the game. That's probably a citation. Looks like Schutze found himself a Sunday steak out there. A criminal could pick this town clean when the Packers are playing. Well, if it weren't for me. Let's move along there, fella. Probably a Bears fan. Top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. Did his inexperienced quarterback let him down? Nice people, but not the kind of people who train heavyweight champion boxers. And did the death of Buster's mother motivate him to fight the perfect fight? 
spurred him on to train as he's never trained before. I was in that zone, that zone. It was just my time to shine. The top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. 9 Eastern Monday on ESPN Classic. Broncos. Looked like he had a cramp in his right calf. Antoine Carter straight up the middle. He got it. And he's going to have enough for a first down. Move well, the chains. <laughs> let's see where they well, spot it. All right, the, the official on the top is over the 40. And he's waving the chains yeah. ahead. Big first down for the Broncos. As they look to create a little momentum here to start this second half, they trail it 20 to 7. Zabranski, as you mentioned, Tom, looked like he had some sort of cramping. I know that was a big issue at Georgia. He stretched out that right calf and looks to be okay. So it's going to bring up a first and 10 ball at the Bronco 40. That's Antoine Carter in the backfield. Over to Gerard Rabb. Shakes and gets ahead. And he's down the sidelines. Gerard Rabb tiptoeing down the sidelines. And it looks like they, they rule him out at the 48 and a half yard line way back. So that's going to be a little short of a first down as we take a look again. It's one of those plays where it's hard to determine where he went out of bounds. Let's take a look. Great job of breaking that tackle by Kenny, the, the attempted tackle by Kenny Patton. He was running the tightrope there and uh, had one foot out before he got those extra 10 yards. So he marked him out at the 49-yard line. That's a yard short. It's going to bring up second and one. Antoine Carter again in the backfield for the Broncos. Zabranski over to Jason Murray. And he is up ahead to the 40. That's easy first down yardage. That'll move the chains again. And the Broncos getting a little bit of a rhythm here. First and 10. Well, Hawaii is bringing the house on uh, more plays than not. And the Broncos going to those quick outs. First to Rab, then to Jason Murray. Murray's third catch of the night. And this is the same exact play that went to Rab the previous time. And Jason Murray making the most of it that time. First and 10 Broncos now in Hawaii territory at the 41. That's Ian Johnson in the backfield. Zabranski with pressure, flushed. Down the field, out of bounds, throws it away. That'll bring up a second down. Pressure that time from Brad Kalili Moku. Good job on the pronunciation, Tom. Well, we worked on it for a week. <laughs> I was Especially. going through the airport. <laughs> Kalili Moku, Kamaka Vivo Ole. People on Waikiki Beach thought I was going out of my mind. Brad Kalili Moku, 5'10", 204 pounds, sophomore from Honolulu. Second and 10 now, Broncos at the Hawaii 41. Ian Johnson still in the backfield. That's Cole Clayson in motion. Zabranski once again flushed. Under pressure, and he goes down at the 43. Tanawasa Moe blitzing from the bottom of your screen. The Warriors have put a lot of heat consistently on Zabranski what they did last week in their shutout of Idaho and they've uh, done a great job of it tonight. The Boise State offense, of course, has not scored. The, uh, the Rainbow Warriors, nope, sorry, Warriors have gone six quarters now without allowing an offensive touchdown. So that was a loss of three. The ball now at the Hawaii 44. That brings up third and 13 for the Broncos, trying to keep this drive alive. Split receivers. It's an inside slant to Dryden James. And not a lot of room brought down by number 41. That is Solomon Elamimian, short of the first down. Well set up out there with uh, Darren College and Pete Cavender leading interference along with Jason Murray. But uh, James could never get his motor going. And it looks like the Broncos are going to go for it. They've got fourth and six at the Hawaii 37, kind of in that middle range, a little far for a field goal. And there's a Bronco down. And that looks like it is Rice and James. Rice and James. Now he he got up at the end of that play and was headed back to the huddle before he hit the turf. There's Jerry Glanville. We've talked about him tonight. Of course, he was the uh, longtime NFL man in Houston and Atlanta. 11-year hiatus and comes back to work under his buddy June Jones. 
And Zabransky looks like he's still trying to shake that, uh, that possible cramp in his right leg as they still tend to Dryson James, the junior from Phoenix, breakout year in 2004. Looking for Dryson to get a breakout game here sometime soon. And he's up on his feet. Dryson walking under his own power. Looks like he's just a little shaken up. Of course, missed the Georgia game and has come back and been one of the leading receivers for the Broncos, one of the go-to guys. And here we go. This is going to be a big one. Their second fourth down attempt of the night. They're one for one. They went on it on their first possession of the game. It's going to be fourth and six here. The ball at the Hawaii 37. The Broncos looking to keep this drive alive and build some momentum. The crowd comes alive. Zabransky back to pass. Lots of heat. He's out of the pocket and he finds Derek Schumann for the first down. Schumann has dropped a couple, but a big catch there to keep this drive alive. Did Derek Schumann need that or what? And did Zabransky need that or what? A big time clutch play for Derek Schumann and Zabransky feeling major heat and making something happen. Zabransky's first choice was on the left side. Then he got heat again and had to scramble, throwing on the run. And a good and job of recognizing Schumann and not trying to get it on the ground. So here we go. Cradled that ball. First and 10 Broncos. This is Ian Johnson. Not a lot of room, maybe a couple. Bring up second down. Ian Johnson tonight, eight carries for 45 yards. Just about on his uh, average yards per carry. And Ian Johnson is leading the Broncos in rushing this season. Coming into the game, 32 for 208 yards. As you mentioned, Tom, 6.4 yards a carry. And with that rush, he bumps it up now to nine carries for 48 yards. Tenth play of this drive for the Broncos. And they're going to want to talk about it. They call timeout with second and 10. The Broncos have the ball at the Hawaii 28. Zabransky going to talk it over with Dan Hawkins. Broncos down 20 to 7 here in Honolulu. for the gridiron with your favorite NFL and college football apparel at ESPNshop.com. You want it? We've got it. From clothes to cleats and everything in between. So as you get ready for the new season, gear up at ESPNshop.com or call 1-800-762-1701 for a free catalog. Please rise for our couple of first dance as Tyson and Wise. with a blitz, Zabransky time over the middle, Legadu Nene, and it is incomplete, juggled it out of bounds. And actually that was Jason Murray there. Jason Murray with a chance, got the deflection, tried to grab it, and he just juggled it, couldn't hold on to it. Great job of closing by Lolo Manners. He's had a big game tonight already with an interception and a fumble recovery. 
got his hand in there at the last second, and uh, Murray was almost able to corral it on, on a second chance. Great effort there to keep his eye on the ball. Almost came down with it. Triple receivers to the top. Zabranski and shotgun, third and 10. Zabranski to Sherm Blazer. Hit hard out of bounds, and it's complete for a first down inside the 10. The seldom used Sherm Blazer with a huge play. And his first catch of the year. And it's the, the Eagle tight end connection that has come through on this drive. Derek Schumann on fourth and six, and a rope thrown by Jared Zabranski to Blazer. And a huge play as the Broncos convert on third down and keep the drive alive. And now they have first and goal at the eight yard line. Lee Marks back in a tailback. So here we go. Marks gets it up the middle. Has a little room, takes it inside the five, brought down there, and the Broncos knocking on the door. Solomon Eliminian on the stop. One of those true freshmen playing for Hawaii. They're, they're playing about six or seven true freshmen. And Lee Marks with a quiet night. Three rushes for 20 yards tonight. 13 plays in the drive. It's gone over four minutes so far. And the Broncos only down 13. It's a two-possession game. They need seven out of this. Second and goal at the Hawaii three-yard line. This is Zabranski, the fade. Up top to Rab, and it's a touchdown, Broncos! And we've seen that before, Tom. They scored on that fade a couple of times at Oregon State, and it pays off here tonight as the Broncos trying to get it within six. And a nice touch put on the ball that time by Zabranski. Rab had to go up and get it, but Zabranski knows he can do it. And that's what makes Rab so effective. He's a tall receiver, 6'2", and it's a dimension the Broncos have not had traditionally over the last few years with smaller receivers. This is Anthony Morgan for the point after, and he kind of knuckle balls it in there, and it's good. And the Broncos now back within six, 2014 Hawaii with 7.04 to go here in Honolulu. 7.04 to go in the third quarter. There's one place where sports' hottest athletes mix with the glamour of Hollywood. Hey, I'm Andy Roddick. Welcome to my party. ESPN Hollywood takes you inside the celebrity lives of sports' top stars. Still got a lot of offers to do new movies. The spotlight. It's almost like walking around with Brad Pitt. The sets. That's Reggie Jackson. The shoots. And everything Hollywood. David Beckham, he fit really nicely in Mysterio Lane. ESPN Hollywood. Weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. ESPN Fantasy Football is so easy to use. Yeah, and it doesn't require a major time commitment. And we love the camaraderie it engenders. The way we're talking is so weird. This room and our clothes. Brandy, Randy, Candy, I don't think we exist. What, what do, do you mean, mean, Sandy? I think we're just part of some guy's fantasy, and whoever he is, he obviously loves ESPN Fantasy Football, and we're just icing on the cake. Ooh, oh. there's cake? <sighs> ESPN, ESPN Fantasy Football. Play for free at ESPN.com slash fantasy football. A great sportscaster once promised to tell it like it is. Not quite. Because first you have to tell it like it was. Every weeknight, Classic Now will take breaking sports news and give it to you with a deep perspective and backstory from yesterday to today and back. All in one show. I'm Josh Elliott. Join me for Classic Now, where the past is always present. 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic Now. One of college football's most celebrated coaches. One of ESPN News' most insightful shows. Now they're joining forces. Coaching legend Lou Holtz joins ADT College Coaches Spotlight, covering the week that was and the week ahead in college football. Still perfect on PATs, 12 for 12. And that ball's going to go out of bounds, and for the second time tonight, the Broncos, or actually Kyle Stringer that time kicking it out of bounds, the Broncos will be penalized for that, and Hawaii going to start on their own 35. Yeah, Hawaii uh, had that happen to them yeah, earlier tonight. Exactly. But going back to Anthony Montgomery, the kicking game, a question coming into the season, but perfect, 12 for 12. And uh, he's been perfect on field goals this year as well, 4 for 4 this year. Broncos needed to get that, that goose egg out of their system. 
and now it's just a six-point game. They stopped the Warriors on a three and out on the first possession of the second half. Let's see what happens here. So clearly the second half, starting uh, the way the Broncos hoped it would start, playing better on defense, as you mentioned, with the stop and then the long drive with the payoff. So the Warriors start at their own 35, first and 10 for Colt Brennan. Again, triple receivers to the bottom, the give to Ilawa. And uh, he's gonna pick up about three. Tried to plow over Ellis Powers, but where is that Scandrick? Powers and uh, Scandrick, the 16 and the 18 look similar. I think it's uh, I think it's Ellis Powers in there. There he is, Ellis Powers. Uh, he's a backup safety, but seeing a lot of action tonight. The freshman from Lakewood, California, 5'10", 201. Broncos have a number of nickel and dime packages for tonight's game. So here's Hawaii now, second and seven at their own 38. Triple receivers again to the bottom of your screen. Brennan with heat, gets out of trouble, and he's gonna throw it away, and it short hops in front of it looks like Austin Smith over there on the coverage. The Hawaii offensive line left side was hanging on for dear life as Mike G. Williams and Andrew Browning were coming from the top and then Jer Jared Alexander on the corner blitz showed Brennan some speed and he really was lucky to get rid of that ball. So here we go. Broncos force another third down. It's going to be third and seven and the Broncos looking for another three and out as Austin Smith a little slow to get up. He's kind of... Uh, pointing at a hamstring here. And that looks exactly like what, what it is. So let's see if uh, Cam Hall slides into that position. Cam Hall has been playing a lot tonight in the nickel and dime packages. Dan Hawkins said that uh, Hall had to play better. Still shaking off the rust. So we get a look at the Hawaii bench there. That's number 59 Derek for Hawaii. Fa'avi. Derek Fa'avi looks like he's a little bit banged up, and it's been kind of a tough game. Looks like he hurt his wrist there. And now third and seven for Hawaii. Big down here for the Bronco defense. This is Brennan. Inside slant, and there's room, but brought down by Colt Brooks. Gang tackled there is number 27, Andre Taylor, and the Broncos hold. First man to get there was the aforementioned Cam Hall. And Brooks in pass covers doing a great job. So once again, the Broncos force a punt and a potential three and out as Hawaii on to punt. And we'll have Quentin Jones back again for the Broncos. And Kurt Milne standing as, at his own 29, ready to punt it away for Hawaii. Gets it away cleanly, cleanly, a good spiraling kick, sends Jones back, takes it at the eight. Lots of room on the left side of the field, and he's fast. Quinn Jones, the fastest player for the Broncos. 4.3 speed, he's out in the 50. Quinn Jones can outrun anybody. The 20, the 10, Quinn Jones, touchdown Broncos! A 92-yard kickoff or punt return by Quentin Jones. He took it on the eight. I believe that is the longest in Boise State history. And there are no flags down, and there was a lot of room on the far side of the field, and when he gets in the open, Quentin Jones is not going to be caught from behind. He's the fastest Bronco on the team. 4.3 world-class speed, and the Broncos now with a chance for their first lead of the game. Anthony Montgomery with the PAT. High snap, it's up and it's through. The Broncos with 14 unanswered here in the second half. They lead 21 to 20, and here it is again. Quinton Jones at the eight yard line. Look at this block coming up right here by Cam Hall to spring him, and then Jones does the rest himself. Look at those moves inside. And there's then no way they're gonna catch him, Tom. That is the longest punt return in Boise State history, and on cue, the rain starts falling. Wow. 92 yards, breaking a 36-year-old Boise State record going back to 1969, Henry Jenkins against Idaho State. And Tom, it could not have come at a better time. 
Well, we talked about Quinton Jones earlier and the fact that he wanted to get a chance to return punts, and he had, he had pleaded with Dan Hawkins to give him that chance, and Hawk said, okay, you catch 30 in a row in practice. Without and, muffing them. And we'll give you a chance. And he said yesterday, Austin Smith would probably be in on punt return the first, and uh, Quinton Jones would get a chance on the second punt return. And two huge special teams plays on back-to-back -back weeks. The Lee Marks return on the kickoff against Bowling Green really turned that game around in the second quarter and here we go Quinton Jones giving the Broncos the lead Kyle Stringer to kick it off and we got a ball game everybody Hawaii's Andre Taylor takes it at the goal line and he's straight up the middle he's got speed but brought down in a hurry by Kyle Stringer, Kyle Stringer. making the tackle how about the punter This is the hardest rain of the uh, of the evening here at Aloha Stadium. And you gotta love Kyle Stringer sprinting downfield and making the tackle straight up and putting a lick on Andre Taylor. Remember how Greg Erickson used to do that for the Broncos? Absolutely. He insisted on being part of special teams more than just putting his foot on the ball. All righty, so Hawaii now trying to answer as they find themselves behind for the first time this game. First and 10, they start at their own 28. This is Colt Brennan in the rain. Out to Grice Mullen and no gain. Snuffed out beautifully by Colt Brooks over there to make the stop. Colt Brooks uh, probably hurt a little bit by the touchdown he gave on, uh, up to Devon Bess in the first half and he's been playing great here in the second half for Boise State. And wow, the rain really starting to come down and as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, there was a flash flood warning for Honolulu this afternoon, but it kind of held off, and now it's coming down. Broncos going with that three-man front, and Dennis Ellis in the game now at left tackle for the Broncos. Second and nine for Hawaii at their 29. Four receivers, no room for Brennan, but he gets away again. Dennis Ellis in hot pursuit. All sorts of time, directing traffic is Brennan, and he throws it away. That's got to drive defensive linemen crazy. Corey Hall, Andrew Browning, Chris Barrios, and Dennis Ellis all giving chase. So Dan Hawkins with a raincoat on. Third and 10, the Broncos call it third and nine. The Broncos now trying to force their third consecutive three and out for Hawaii. Broncos with a little hybrid 3-4 going here. Tonight on defense, they might bring Hall, they might bring Alexander, they might bring Cam Hall. They're really mixing it up defensively. And uh, Hawaii, 5 of 12 on third down, and it's more like third and 10 for Hawaii. This is Brennan. He's got some time, fires it, and incomplete, and he took a lick there at the end. And Hawaii now unraveling a little bit on offense. You can feel the momentum is turned, and June Jones can feel it. Dennis Ellis and Ellis Powers on the pressure that time. As, the, as uh, Boise State using a lot of bodies now defensively here in the second half. And so the Broncos force another punt. And we've got uh, Quinton Jones back there again. He just returned one. Let's see what happens. Kurt Milne punting. He's at his 15. He gets it away. And it's a high punt. Quentin Jones is going to field it. And he muffs the punt. And this is not good. Hawaii recovers, but we do have a flag on the field. So hold the phone, everybody. Maybe a holding against Boise State, though. We've got 51, Ikaika Kernan with the recovery and some hesitation there. Holding on the receiving team, number 16. That's exactly that penalty what will it was. be the uh, we'll take the result of the play. Orlando Scandrick with the hold. And and Quentin Jones goes from a major high to a low. After, after a game-turning 92-yard There was hesitation return. here. He wasn't sure if he wanted to field it. Well, he gave a, a kind of a weak, fair catch signal. There was major hesitation. He wasn't sure how to deal with it because it was up in the air very high, and it is raining here. That could have been a factor as well. Either way, the Broncos turn it over. And Hawaii gets another life here. It's first and 10. And they are in Bronco territory at the 45. Triple receivers to the top of your screen. This is Brennan, the blitz. 
Over the middle, he completes it to Bryce Mullen. Gain of about eight. Bryce Mullen took a look there from Alex Guerrero and uh, Cam Hall. Alex Guerrero dropping back that time. So Hawaii, after being forced to in three consecutive three and outs to start this first, this second half, are now in Bronco territory for the first time in this half. And Bryce Mullen with a big game tonight, six catches for 68 yards. Become, become a game of huge momentum swings. Second and two. Hawaii, the inside handoff again. Lots of room. Ilawa is loose. And Ilawa scores the touchdown. 37 yards on the run. Boy, does that change things. Oh my. Look at, look at the open middle of the field here. Great cross blocking by the Hawaii offensive line and Ilawa, once he gets ahead of steam up, uh, an arm tackle is not going to bring him down. 108 yards rushing for Hawaii. Alawa with 67 of those as the Warriors go back on top, and it looks like they're going to go for two here. They're going to try to make it a seven-point ball game. Triple receivers to the top. And there's the numbers on when to go for two, at least by the book. This is Brennan. Up top, Ross Dickerson has it. And Hawaii converts, and that puts him up a touchdown, and that is big, Tom. Gerald Alexander had position, but lost his balance, and that opened the door. And that was actually Sly. Sly. 82 is Dickerson, and that's Sly with the conversion there on the fade as we take a look one more time. Jordan Sly with a big game. Wasn't expected to play a whole lot. He's not on the two deep. He's not on the two dip deep. And uh, and here's the touchdown once again. Nady Lawa a load. And you get that guy rumbling in the open field with that speed, you're not going to bring him down. And the water falls off the goalpost, I think. So this thing going back and forth. And Quentin Jones, huge 92-yard punt return, got him ahead and then muffed the following punt, and that led to seven, call it eight for Hawaii as they go up 28-21. 3.15 to go here in the third quarter. Basically evens things out. The Jones punt return and Jones fumble, and all is back to normal, except that Hawaii got the two-point conversion, so they lead by seven. Here's the kickoff. Jones fields it in the end zone, and he's coming out. And he's uh, not going to get to the 20. Brought down at the 18. Victor Fergustrom bringing Jones down, and that's where the Broncos will start as we get a look at Nate Ilawa, a big game for him. And again, Hawaii really doing it on the ground tonight and really for the first time this season, effective on the ground. Well, Nate Ilawa, the key, he missed last week's game. He entered fall camp out of shape and in the coach's doghouse at Hawaii, got back into shape, had a big game at Michigan State and is having a bigger one tonight. As you see, Jared Zabransky has got it together and he's gonna try to keep that going and he's got a keeper here. He's on the ground, takes it up to the 30 and that's gonna be good enough for a first down as Zabransky makes things happen with his legs. That looked like a broken play. It really did. At some point, I think, he just figured, well, let me just tuck it away and see what I can do. It looked like Zabransky was at least looking for a chance for a, a, a play fake, and there was no one to, uh, to execute that to. So he moves the chains out to the 31st and 10 Broncos. Double receivers to the bottom. That's Cole Clayson in motion. Ian Johnson with the ball and brought down immediately by Kila Kamaka Vivovole. No game. He's been the biggest playmaker so far in Jerry Glanville's 3-4. Kamaka Vivovole. Johnson, if he gets past him, he's got room to roam. 
the flow, he was cutting back against the grain, the flow was going the other way, but Kamika Viva Ole and filled the little gap. Kamika, uh, Kamaka Viva Ole, 15 tackles, two sacks coming into the game. He's the reigning WAC Defensive Player of the Year. Second and 10 for the Broncos at their 30. This is Zabransky, lots of time. Doesn't find a man, he tucks it away and out past the 35. Brought down by number 67, Michael Lafaele. Michael Lafaele, very disruptive uh, in the Hawaii defense as the nose tackle. Zabransky does give the Broncos a third and short here. And that was a six yard gain. It's gonna bring up third and four. The Broncos at their own 36. Triple receivers to the bottom, two to the top. Empty backfield, that's Schumann in motion. Zabransky, quick slant. Cole Clayson can't hang on to it. The big hit there by Manners, or yes, Lono Manners. You know, the ball was thrown too high for Clayson, but had he caught it, he would not have had the first down. He did not have first down, down yardage. Watch how Clayson has to go up and get this ball, but he would have been two yards short of the first down, and Lolo Manners put another hit. What a big game that guy's having. He's huge. He's Senior a, from Wayanae. So Kyle Stringer on to punt it away. Andre Taylor back for the Warriors. Stringer standing at his own 22. Muffs the snap, and he's going to run for it. And he's going to get the first down. And the Broncos with a first down on a muffed. Holy Toledo. Wow. Stringer with a heads up play. Can hold on to the snap. And he turns it upfield and gets it out to midfield for a first down. Look at this. And, and of course, uh, you have your punt cover on. And nobody saw it coming. My, mainly the Broncos. Cam Hall was out on the left side. and. Saw Stringer busting out there and look for somebody to block. And kudos to Stringer for not trying to get it away, kick it away as he was moving. He tucked it away and he was going for the first down the whole way. So the Broncos with new life here. First and 10. The drive stays alive. They're at their own 49. Lee Marks back in there in the backfield. And it is a fake to Marks. Zabransky, lots of room to run. And he's out to the 40, and that's good for another first down, gain of 11. You know, when Lee Marks come, comes in, you have to respect that, and the defense has to respect that. Great play fake this time by Zabransky, two marks. That froze the defense. The flow was going the other way, and Zabransky took advantage. So the Broncos moving the chains again. They're now in Hawaii territory. At the Warrior 40-yard line, a minute to go here in the third quarter. It's a good one here tonight from Honolulu. First and 10 Broncos. Lee Marks, but that's Antoine Carter in the backfield. He gets it, and he busts it. Antoine Carter, 20, one man to beat. He's down at the six-yard line, brought down by Kanoa, or excuse me, Landon Kafensis, and a huge gain for Antoine Carter. Carter's supposed to be more of a short yardage guy, but uh, he had a long run at Georgia. He has a lo the longest run of his career here. 33 yards for the little it, big man. <laughs> yeah, uh, he has the biggest calves I have ever seen. At his, least on a guy that size. One of his calves is equal to your waist, Tom. He is, <laughs> he is low to the ground. He is a bowling ball and he's hard to bring down. So the Broncos in business inside the 10. It's first and goal at the Hawaii 7. This is Ian Johnson inside the 5 to the 3. What an odd drive this has been. Very bizarre. The key conversion on fourth down, probably not the way Coach Hawk would drive, draw it up. This is the seventh. This is coming up the eighth play of this drive. Broncos. And it looks like the Broncos are going to let it wind down as three are in the book here from Honolulu. When we come back, the Broncos are going to have second and goal. They trail 28-21.
shortstop ever? Well, in the pantheon of Yankee shortstops, I definitely put him ahead of Scooter and Cressetti. Yeah, his limited power drags down his OPS a little, but he's still one of the most clutch hitters of all time. Whoa. He turns that mean 6-4-3, and he's got the soft hands of Hannes Wagner, and even Boston fans call him Captain Intangible. How do you know he has soft hands? Classic Now with host Josh Elliott, 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, Classic Now. Brothers and sisters. See you later. This is for the win. The old guard. <laughs> and the next generation. They go deep now. Got it. College football is family. ABC is your home. A once-storied high school football team looks to return to their celebrated past. For one season, NFL legend Dick Butkus becomes head coach. If you don't have it inside you, I don't know what to do. Can his discipline... I can't coach you, losers. ...and determination... You've got to believe that we're going to win. ...be the life lessons they need to return the team to glory. Bound for glory. A new reality series, Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Miss the live telecast. The game you're watching right now will repeat on 24-7 Sunday at 8 a.m., 12 noon, and 5 p.m. And don't forget, 24-7 available over the air on UHF Channel 49. Second and goal for the Broncos. This is Antoine Carter, and nowhere to go, and it looks like the ball's on the ground. And Hawaii saying they have it. Let's wait for the official call. Referees have not signaled as we take a look at the play. Oh, uh, he was down. Way he down. He was down, way down. There's no question. Yeah. There's no question he was down. The ball clearly down. And uh, the referees make the right call. Crowd doesn't like it, but it's the right call. That'll bring up third and goal. Broncos now on the six-yard line. Regan Maui leaves the game. He thought he had it. The Broncos dodge a bullet there of sorts. Third and goal. Jeff Carpenter in the backfield for the Broncos. That's Legadu Nane in the slot. Gerard Rabb at the top. Cole Clayson at the bottom. Fade to Nane. Touchdown, Broncos! We've talked about a number of guys who have needed things to happen in their careers, and this is one for Legadu Nane, his first touchdown as a Bronco. And a big touchdown, Tom. The fade didn't go to Gerard Rabb this time. It went to another 6-2 guy. Broncos answer. 10-play, 82-yard drive. This is Anthony Montgomery. Crucial PAT. He gets it up and through, and we are all evened up. 28 all. Broncos taking four minutes, 20 seconds off the clock, and they answer, and we've got a ball game. You want game? This fall, ESPN Game Plan has more than 150 extra college football games. Key matchups and rivalries from major conferences. All available when you order your exclusive ESPN Game Plan pay-per-view package. It's maximum college football. To order, call your cable or satellite provider. Also available online. Order at ESPN.com, keyword, Game Plan. I like cheese. J'aime le fromage. J'aime le fromage. J'aime le fromage. End of tape 12. Guys ready? Let's do this! ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. 
from Walt Disney Pictures, based on the amazing true story. Did you hear about the caddy playing in the open? You're a caddy? I can do this. Critics are calling the greatest game ever played, one of the year's best films. It's just trying to make you proud. It's a movie for everyone who ever had a dream. What's that carrying his bag? A pygmy? You got a problem? Walt Disney Pictures presents... That's President Taft. How you doing? The greatest game ever played, based on a true story. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze. Lady PG, in theater September 30th. With a big touchdown here tonight, his first as a Bronco. Kyle Stringer gets it away. Andre Taylor at the goal line. He's got a seam. Watch out. Brought down at the 30 there. Good tackle by Quentin Jones. He had some room. Let's take a look at the touchdown again, Tom. Nice touch again by Zabransky to lay it over the top. A nice hands. Legadunani has really developed into a fine receiver as he uses those hands. He's got really nice soft hands now. And Legadu Nane, that's his only catch of the night, but it was a big one. Touchdown to even up the game as you see the drive there for the Broncos, and they've put together some nice long drives here. And now it's Hawaii's turn as we go back and forth. First and 10, they're gonna start from their own 29. Triple receivers to the bottom. This is Brennan. Pressure from Guerrero gets away again. And over the middle, wide open is Devon Bess. Best and uh, forward progress with the mark that's going to be good for a first down. Broncos went with a four man front that time. The relentless Alex Guerrero started from a standing position on the left side. And this has got to be maddening for the Bronco defense. Brennan looks like they got him bottled up and he keeps escaping. And, and you know, it's making the defense work hard tonight. The good news for the Broncos is they are starting to make him run and flushing him out and eventually something good may come of it. So we've got a first down, Hawaii, the ball now up to the 40 yard line, trips to the top. And this is Colt Brennan. Lots of time, he's got a man, watch out. That's Bryce Mullen. And just like that, Hawaii into Bronco territory all the way down to the 34. Great time by the Hawaii offensive line that time. Coverage Monsters. isn't going to hold up when you have that much time to throw. Monster night for Grice Mullen. He's up to 96 yards. Der Derek Faabi back in the game at center. And Samson Satelli, the all-whack left guard, two-time all-whack left guard, doing the job there. 721 yards total offense between these two teams. They've uh, been moving it up and down, and the Broncos now being tested on defense. It's first and 10. Hawaii at the Bronco 34, triple receivers to the bottom, and here's Brennan. Again, lots of time, and he's brought down. And that is Mike Dominguez coming around the edge. Second sack of the night for Boise State. As uh, Dominguez has been alternating with Mike G. Williams and Mike T. Williams at defensive end. And they walk away being held a little bit there, and then Dominguez finishes off Brennan. And the Broncos finally getting a little payoff. They've been putting heat on Brennan all night. So that backs him up. It's going to be second and 13. The ball now at the Bronco 37. Brennan, quick slant. That's Ross Dickerson. A few moves up past the 30. And this Jordan Sly, the junior from Seattle, wide receiver, is having a big game. He put a great block on Cole Brooks to spring that play. So the uh, Warriors on second down get a big gain and uh, get it down to a much more manageable third and four now. Big down here for the Broncos. They're probably just out of field goal range for Dan Kelly. They're right kind of right on the border here. So here we go, third and four, triple receivers to the top. This is Brennan. Quick slant, and it is dropped. Yeah, we'll see what they do. Andre Taylor can hang on to it, and now very interesting situation for June Jones. Third and four, the ball's at the Bronco 28. 
as the rain starts to fall again. Are they going to burn a timeout here? Nope, here comes uh, Dan or, Kelly. It would it'd be fourth and four, excuse me. And if they chose to go the field goal route, it would be a 45-yarder. Yep, they'll probably put it down at about the 40, uh, 45, as you said, Dave. So he is perfect tonight. A 30-yarder and a 37-yarder. No, that's on the season. Excuse me, that is tonight. Get confused, they converted a two-point conversion. So here we go, Dan Kelly. And it is blocked! And that's Orlando Skandrick on the return. He's got some blockers. He's got speed. Orlando Skandrick in the open. The 15, the five, touchdown Broncos! It's been a special team sky tonight here. Orlando Skandrick, the true freshman, with a heads up play, and the Broncos with another touchdown on special teams. It is 34 28, Boise State, and here's the block. It looked like. Was it Schleckaway? It looked like Schleckaway. We'll have to get another look at We're it. We're not sure. Anthony Montgomery converts, and the Broncos back on top by seven. Broncos lead it, 35-28, 11-23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Sundays, when your game is over, switch over to ESPN News for interviews, news conferences, and complete post-game analysis. It was the right play at the right time. The Blitz, Sundays, 4 to 10 p.m. And Mondays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday Quarterback, presented by Coors Light. You see the character of this football team. A complete wrap-up of the NFL week that was. When he gets you, he's going to hurt you. The Blitz, Sundays, 4 to 10 p.m. And Monday Quarterback, presented by Coors Light, Mondays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., only on ESPN News. PGA Tour on ESPN. The best in the business. VJ, Lefty, Tiger, and the Big Easy. Face off against each other in the PGA Tour's finest in what promises to be the most competitive season ever. Will one of these superstars prevail or will a new young star emerge? The only prediction is you'll witness the best golf in the world. The 2005 PGA Tour all season long on ESPN. Wednesday, October 12th, Freddy is the ladies' man. You just need to find decent women with some substance. And Chris, the wingman. They, they sound fat. And when they get together. Oh, women who care about the simple things in life. At 28, Broncos back on top. And this is Hawaii's Andre Taylor on the return, the 20. Brought down at the 27. And the Broncos special teams play coming through big time tonight and they block field goals they did it last year a number of times and they do it tonight let's see who it is if the play keeps going we just can't get a look at it not, we, we think it's either Dan Gore or Nick Schleckaway or could it have been Darren College <laughs> I don't he's in there on the block team it looked like but nonetheless, Orlando Skandrick, 65-yard return on the blocked field goal. And look at the uh, Boise State conversions on two defensive, uh, one two. defensive touchdowns, two on special teams, and just two on offense tonight. The Broncos will take it any way they can get it. First down at the Hawaii 27. Hawaii now trying to answer. And here's Colt Brennan, some heat, and he's got time, flushed out. Pointing to his receiver, he's got a guy, and that is Bryce Mullen, and he is still alive! And Bryce Mullen is gonna score a touchdown for Hawaii! And who does he burn? Orlando Stanley. Wow! And it was 
similar to Quentin Jones, the high and then the low. That was a 73-yard score as Hawaii, just like that, is going to even it up. Rain really coming down here at Aloha Stadium again. What a game, Tom. Skandrick thought he had Rice Mullen out of bounds. I think that's what he thought, that he stepped out of bounds, and uh, maybe a freshman mistake there as Dan Kelly now tries to get Hawaii even once again. Low snap, and he gets it through, and we're all even. 35 apiece. And there's Bryce Mullen in a monster night. Eight receptions, 169 yards, and one touchdown. The uh, Broncos dropped everybody back this time. Just a three-man rush. Den Dennis Ellis trying to spin, but Brennan had so much time. He, he had all the time in the world. He directs the traffic right over the top of Skandrick. Skandrick just gives him a, a little shove, thinking that he's got him out of bounds. Bryce Mullen does not give up on the play, and he goes in from 73 yards out, and suddenly Hawaii is up to 487 yards in total offense. Wow, and I didn't get a good look at Skandrick there, but just the way that play developed with Brennan on the loose, Skandrick may have taken his eyes off his man and looked at Brennan, and that allowed Bryce Mullen to get behind him. Well, it was just a sandlot play. And when things break down like that, and he's got that much time, Usually, it's bad news for the defense. And Colt Brennan now, with a pretty monster game of himself here, for himself here. They had four guys out there improvising their routes, and Bryce Mullen was the one who cashed in. 51 attempts for Hawaii, most of those by Brennan. Brennan is 25 out of 47 for 366 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. Wow. It's so a Feast or famine night on the <laughs> oh, island. 11 minutes to go, and Hawaii kicks it away in the rain. And Lee Marks bats it down, and he's going to come out, hesitates, and he's out to the 20. So we've got a flag, late one coming in. Let's see what we got here. Well, somebody's not happy with Marks, and Marks isn't happy with somebody. I think he took that ball on the bounce and he maybe wasn't sure if... Holding on the receiving key. Number 10, 10 yards, first out. Number 10? I don't think, I don't think it's 10. I think he meant Ellis Powers, 18, because yes. I don't think Taylor Tharp's playing on uh, special teams. I think it, it was Ellis Powers, At 18. any rate, Broncos bottled up at their 10-yard line after the penalty. How about that for Hawaii? Last two scoring plays, three play, last two scoring drives, three plays, two touchdowns. While the Broncos have been grinding it out. So back and forth we go. We got under 11 minutes to play, and the Broncos have to answer. It's first and 10. They start deep in their own end. It's at their 10-yard line. And the give is to Antoine Carter, and Nowhere to run. 98 on the stop for Hawaii, and that is Malila Purcell, the 6'4 senior, 266 pounds. And an all whack performer last year. And no gain on the play for the Broncos as the officials try to keep the ball dry in the latest day lose. And as you mentioned, Tom, a wild game of major momentum shifts, and you can feel the crowd now is behind the Warriors, second and 10. And we've got a false start, and we got a flag coming, and I think that was Jason Murray in the slot. The Broncos. Five to snap, false start on the offense, number nine, five-yard penalty, still second out. Number nine, Jason Murray. And uh, the Broncos moving in the wrong direction here, and all of a sudden, they're in the shadow of their own goalposts. This is not uh, Dan Hawkins' M.O. So it's going to bring up now second and 15, the ball placed at the Bronco five-yard line. 
crowd tonight, uh, just over 30,000, don't have an official count, but they are making serious noise now. Seven penalties for 49 yards tonight for the Broncos. Here we go, second and 15. Zabranski to pass, ahead to Dryzen James, and it's complete for the first down, out to the 29-yard line, a gain of 24 yards. Another job of nice touch by Jared Zabranski. A looping fade. This was a big one, Tom. They needed that one as they now have some breathing room. It's back out to the 30-yard line. Four catches, 45 yards tonight for Dryzen James. It's actually at the 29-yard line of Boise State. First and 10. Hawaii offsides. They're going to let him go. Free play for the Broncos. And that's Ian Johnson out to the 35. Broncos will take the penalty if that's indeed what it was. Unless there was movement and I didn't see it, it looks like Hawaii just came across early. Get a first and five instead of a second and five. What do we got? They'll just mar Offside march it off. On the defense, number 98, five yard penalty, still first down. Malila Purcell coming across early. From Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. They're three for three starters from Pongo Pongo. Or three on the two deep. So as you mentioned, Tom, that gives the Broncos a unique and rare first and five. What kind of play do you have designed for this scenario? This is Zabransky. He's looking for Nane. He's got him. And Nane trying to break loose the big fella fighting for yards and gets to midfield. The new Nane as uh, he's looking good the, tonight. The new style Nane. Well, he's such a weapon because he's so big and hard to bring down. And the yak, the yards after the catch, is big when you're 6'2. Coaches said that uh, in the first two games, they didn't feel like they got four quarters out of Legadoo. They did last week against Bowling Green, and they are tonight. So, first and 10, Broncos at midfield with 9.30 to go, and this is Lee Marks. Shifting his way ahead for about a four-yard gain. Lolo Manners on the stop for the Warriors. And this is big for the Broncos. The clock ticking now. We're about down to nine minutes to go in the game, and clearly they want to answer here. But at the same time, Tom, they want to milk that clock down. Well, it's uh, like the old adage goes, whoever has the ball last wins. Yes. First and 10 Broncos, or excuse me, second and six Broncos. This is Zabransky looking for Rab. No, not there. Great move. And Zabransky, all of that for about a two-yard gain. Zabransky danced to the outside trying to use the interference of Jeff Carpenter and didn't result in that much. Broncos that time split Rick Schumann out wide as a wide receiver. Flanked to the right as the stop or the uh, running out of bounds was handled by Kila Kamakawiwa Ole. Dan Hawkins in a battle here tonight. 26 game whack win streak on the line. Third and four. Derek Schumann in motion. Double receivers to the top, and this is Zabransky. He's going to turn it upfield, and he's ahead for the first down. Designed play for Zabransky, and it pays off as it moves the chains. They're inside the 40. That fires him up. The uh, rain not coming down as hard right now, more of a steady drizzle. It's thick, though. Zabransky on the option. Left, Lee Marks behind him, never even looked at him. No way. Saw the seam and went for it and got the first at the 39. So it's first and 10, Broncos at the Hawaii 39. Antoine Carter back in the game in the backfield, quick out to Dryzen James. And he wiggles his way down the sideline and that's gonna be a gain of about six yards. Out at the 34. Got James one-on-one -on -one out there with the corner and let him go to work. Dryzen James quietly leading the Broncos with five receptions for 51 yards. A balanced night on the receivers. One, two, three, four guys with double, with more than one catch. Multiple catches, I think is what I was trying to say, Tom. 
second and four. That is Cole Clayson in motion, and Zabranski looks like he's going to audible. He gets it away, and the pitch to Ian Johnson puts a move on. He's got some room, and he's down the sidelines, and he's out at the 19-yard line. But that is a first down and a big gainer for the Broncos. Zabranski so often doesn't look at the pitch man, never pays any attention to him, that the defense is uh, focused on Zabranski. Johnson wide open out there and a great decision by Zabranski to execute the pitch. And here's what we will be seeing more of from Ian Johnson in the next three and a half years. He is the future, Tom, and making a contribution in the now. First and 10 Broncos inside the Hawaii 20. This is Zabranski looking right, and he goes right, and that is Dryson James over there. At the six. And it is another Bronco first down. Jared Zabranski in the second half, 12 of 16. After that five for 16 first half. And the Broncos really clicking on offense. This is a shootout. They're gonna have to click on defense here in a little bit. Yes, they are. Eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. A nine play. 85 yard drive. Three minutes off the clock as the Broncos now have a first and goal at the Hawaii, just outside the Hawaii five yard line. This is Antoine Carter. No room to move and he's gonna be down for a loss. Guy's extremely strong, but not when you got three extremely strong Hawaii defenders on you. Tanuvasa Moy in on the stop, the senior. And so that is going to be a loss of about one. They gave him forward progress. The tennis tonight, 31,695, and making noise, and they need to now as the Broncos are knocking on the door. So we've got second and goal at the Hawaii six yard line. Zabranski up top, and he's got Legadu Nene. Broncos touchdown. Moments ago, the first touchdown of Legadu Nene's career. Now number two, and the Broncos go up. And you can see what kind of a weapon he is, and for the first time this season, it's paying off in the end zone. And the Broncos back up by six, and here's Anthony Montgomery attempting the point after. Kyle Stringer is the holder. It is off the goal post, and it goes in. And the Broncos up by seven, 42-35, 7 to go. People listen up. The word is out. ESPN Classic is putting two critically acclaimed sports comedies back to back. Oh, baby. It's time to get excited yeah. because ESPN Classic is pairing new episodes of Cheap Seats with classic episodes of Arliss. Pretty bold move. Well, we're a pretty bold network. Stop it, please. stop it, please. Get ready for a full hour of comedy, ESPN Classic Style. Premieres Monday, October 3rd at 10 Eastern, only on ESPN Classic. Classic, yes. My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just a perfect day. This is your typical Sunday in Green Bay. Crickets. Things were a lot busier when everybody's racing to get to the game. That's probably a citation. Looks like Schutze found himself a Sunday steak out there. A criminal could pick this town clean when the Packers are playing. Well, if it weren't for me. Let's move along there, fella. Probably a Bears fan. 
top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. Did his inexperienced cornerman let him down? Nice people, but not the kind of people who train heavyweight champion boxers. And did the death of Buster's mother motivate him to fight the perfect fight? Spurred him on to train as he's never trained before. I was in that zone, that zone. It was just my time to shine. The top five reasons you can't blame Mike Tyson for losing to Buster Douglas. 9 Eastern Monday on ESPN Classic. Down, did not get to the 20-yard line. And that was Quentin Jones and Vinny Peretta in on the stop. He a follow there as well, the Mountain Home product. The Mountain Home Tiger. And so, back and forth we go. The Broncos lead 42-35. What a game, 7.09 to go, and now June Jones in Hawaii's turn to answer. Bronco defense has been playing much better in the second half. The numbers don't show it. The 73-yard touchdown pass skewed things, but the Bronco defense has been playing a lot better in the second half. First and 10, Hawaii, they're at their own 19. Triple receivers to the bottom. Colt Brennan again in the shotgun. The inside handoff to Ilawa. And the Broncos stiffen that one out. Short gain up to the 22, three yards. Tim Volk on the stop, the uh, the backup nose tackle. And, and he, it is nose tackle right now as the Broncos continue to go with the three-man front. Right now it's uh, Mike G. Williams, Alex Guerrero, and Tim Volk. Ellis Powers was uh, the fourth man on the line and the uh, designated pass rusher on that play. So second down for Hawaii, call it six, a long six. And this is Brennan, the blitz, gets it away to Ilawa. And Corey Hall in on the stop with Volk. He gets out to the 25, gain of two. He's gonna bring up third down. As you can well, that, see. That was, that was great pressure applied by the Broncos that time, and a great job by, by Brennan to get rid of that thing. Look at Chris Barrios. A clear lane on Brennan. He gets it away just in time to Ilawa. And Hall had to make a sure tackle there on the wide-legged Ilawa. So it's third down Hawaii. Third and four. Big play here for the Broncos. Looking for the stop. This is Brennan. Out. And it is incomplete. And they're going to throw a flag. And the Bronco coaches are saying uncatchable. The ball was well overthrown, and they want an uncatchable call. And that's Orlando Skandrick over there on the coverage. Here it is again. Defensive pass interference. Yeah, he bumped him, Number Tom. 16, spot foul, automatic, first down. If the ball was, was ruled uncatchable, that would not be ruled a foul, but they do not rule it uncatchable. And that's going to move the chains for Hawaii. Guy with flubber on his feet could have pulled that one down easily. First and 10, Hawaii, as they are looking to answer. Ball now at the Hawaii 35. Triple receivers to the bottom of your screen. 5.40 to go. Big first down for the Warriors. Here's Brennan. He's got a man over the middle. Past midfield, and that is... Is that Sly again? Jordan Sly again. Jordan Sly. Big game for Jordan Sly. As you mentioned, Tom, he was not on the two deep coming in, and that was his third catch of the night. One of them a two-point conversion. Seems like he's had more than that. He's had two catches plus the one-point conversion. Yes. Or the two-point conversion. Or two-point. Did I say one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got first and ten, Hawaii. 5.25 to go in this one. The ball at the Boise State 47. This is Brennan. He's got a man. Devon Bess. All the way down to the Bronco 26. Brought down by Austin Smith. Boy, that guy just goes up and gets the ball. And the Broncos just having fits tonight with these receivers. Broncos get zoned a little bit that time and... Best finds the opportunity. He had a step on Smith. The Broncos lead 42-35. Five minutes to go. You see Best there with over 100 yards and two scores. And 
Hawaii now in Bronco territory. First and 10 at the Boise State 26. 200 yard receivers for the uh, Warriors. Here's Brandon, inside handoff again. They've been doing that all night, and Ilawa takes it inside the 25. Great shoestring tackle by Cole Brooks. There was a lot of green ahead of Ilawa, as there was on his 37-yard uh, touchdown run in the third quarter. And it's a difficult uh, offense to stop when they get the running game into the equation because the Broncos have to honor that, and uh, it just becomes a serious problem as we are now almost down to four minutes to go. Hawaii trailing seven points. Second and eight, ball at the Boise State 24. This is Brennan looking right. He's got pressure and Corey Hall there on the stop and we got a flag on the field. Yeah, but the flag is thrown uh, in, in an area roughing the passer. Roughing, it's gonna be called on Chris Barrios. Roughing the passer. Great job by Brennan on the coverage, but uh, a rough, and so that will take the ball. Roughing the passer on the defense, number 97. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. 15 yards, automatic first down. That takes it from the 24 all the way down to the nine-yard line. It was uh, Nick Schleckaway who was flagged for that. Ball is half the distance, actually, to the 12. Yes, they went half the distance. So it's gonna be first and 10. They can get a first down without scoring, but they'd have to take it inside the two. Triple receivers again to the bottom. That's Ilawa in the backfield with Brennan in the shotgun. This is Brennan looking right. Pressure goes left. Buying time and we got a flag on the field and Brennan's still alive. And he gets away and it's incomplete, but is it a lateral? No, it was no, a forward pass. It was a forward pass. It might be a hold over there. There's a lot of craziness on that play. How could there not be a hold on that? Hold on Hawaii. Tala Esera, I believe, was a guilty party. So that's going to back him up. Holding on the offense, number 70, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first down. It was Tala Esera over there. It's a big break for the Broncos. Boy, Brennan is great at Sandlot football, isn't he? That is amazing, and it's, uh, it, like I said, it's got to drive defensive players crazy when you go all out like that and expend energy chasing a guy, and he gets away and makes a play. They've gotten to him a couple times tonight, but they've had about seven almost, some of which uh, Brennan has turned into touchdowns. So Hawaii backed up, it's now first and 20, ball at the 22. Trips to the bottom, and this is Ilawa into the pile, breaks through for a couple, brought down by Alex Guerrero and Michael G. Uh, Williams. And again, with Ilawa, you've gotta make sure they wrapped up really well, and he still got three extra yards out of it. So that was a gain of three, it's gonna bring up Second and 17 for Hawaii as the clock now becoming an issue. 320 to go here in this ball game from Honolulu. Well, if we go into overtime, since uh, it's about 20 till two in Boise, we may be here till uh, sunrise, uh, or until Boise sunrise. On your screen it says second and 14. It's a little longer than that. Up over the middle, he's got a man. Touchdown, Hawaii, and that is Bryce Mullen again. Brennan on fire. Colt Brennan, 28, 29 for 51 with four touchdowns. Brennan, plenty of time. Guerrero got there just after he released. And Bryce Mullen was waiting in the back of the end zone. And Hawaii again, one point away from evening this up again as we go back and forth. Here's the extra point attempt, Dan Kelly. Bad snap, and the Broncos block the kick. And here is Orlando Skandrick again. Orlando Skandrick's got a convoy. And here he goes down the sidelines. That's Orlando Skandrick, touchdown Broncos. Or actually, conversion. that's a two-point conversion, excuse me. 
That is a two-point conversion, Tom. Thank you very much on the blocked extra point. It is a two-point defensive conversion, but what a big two points it is because it makes it a three-point ball game. So the Broncos lead by three on the defensive two-point conversion. A stunning turn of events. And we've had stunning turn of events throughout the night on special Unbelievable teams. Unbelievable special teams play. And again, you block a field goal, take it back. We've seen that tonight. That's a touchdown. You block the extra point, take it back. Two-point defensive conversion. And that gives the Broncos a three-point lead. They're up 44-41. for the gridiron with your favorite NFL and college football apparel at ESPNshop.com. You want it? We've got it. From clothes to cleats and everything in between. So as you get ready for the new season, gear up at ESPNshop.com or call 1-800-762-1701 for a free catalog. Please rise for our couple of Spurs fans as Hudson and Live. <laughs> Twin Falls and KSKN, KSKN Spokane's WB22. And 3.03 to go here in the ball game. And uh, the Broncos are going, going to get the ball back on the kickoff, nevertheless. And the, the Broncos, here's the blocked field goal, the blocked extra point again, excuse me. And uh, that was big Mike T. Williams with the blocker. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Ellis. Ellis. Dennis Ellis and Orlando Skandrick. Johnny on the spot. He's got the speed. He returned the field goal for the touchdown for six points. Here with the convoy on the blocked extra point. That's a two-point conversion. And we're underway with Lee Marks on the kickoff. In traffic, out past the 20-yard line. And uh, eight points scored for the true freshman tonight. And again, we can't overemphasize how big that was because the missed extra point made it a one-point game. And then the two-point conversion takes it up to three points, and instead of a tie ball game, the Broncos now up by three. With 2.58 left, Hawaii has all three timeouts left. So the Broncos are gonna need to move the chains here if they don't wanna give Hawaii another chance, and Hawaii has, has gotten that offense going again in the fourth quarter after a sluggish third quarter, and it's a, a knife through butter right now. And the way they've been moving, and I think the Broncos do not wanna see it in the hands of Colt Brennan. They want to milk this thing down and move the chains. And look at the total offense, folks. First and 10 Broncos at their own 23. Zabranski the give to Lee Marks. And looks like we've got a flag, a whistle before the play. A false start at this point of the game is bad news. Delay of game on the offense, number five, five-yard penalty. Remains That's not first good down. either, Tom. Delay Please put 258 on the yes. clock, 258. When you come in to start a series, you got to have it together. So the Broncos backed up now. It's going to bring up first and 15 at the Bronco 18. And the clock remains stopped. 556 yards for Hawaii. Here we go, first and 15. This is Zabranski, the give again to Marks. Gets outside, has some room, and a good run out to the 28. 
and gets the Broncos back into a second and about seven. Great first down run that time by Lee Marks. What a game, Tom. 2.40 to go. The guy who came up with a shiner 10 days ago against Bowling Green. We can't say, it looks like there's still traces of that on Lee Marks' face as Sobranski looks for the call. Clock and running. And this game, Tom, similar to uh, several nail-biting shootouts on the road last year. The give is to Antoine Carter, and he pulls ahead out past the 30 to the 31-yard line, and that's going to bring up a third down. Timeouts, as you mentioned, Tom, Hawaii with all three. That'll become a factor. Hawaii has called their first timeout. And that'll leave them with two, and there's 2.16 to play here in the fourth quarter. June Jones burning his first timeout, and uh, he has to do everything he can to get the offense back on the field. And Coach Hawkins here with a third and two upcoming. Uh, if they can move the chains, that's really going to put Hawaii in a tough situation. Total offense tonight, 556 for Hawaii, 416 for Boise State. But that doesn't tell the story of special teams. 92-yard kickoff return by Quentin Jones. The uh, blocked field goal returned 65 yards for a touchdown by Orlando Skandrick. And the crucial two-point conversion return by Skandrick. We have seen everything tonight, we have. Tom. We There's have. been an interception return, defensive uh, score. As you mentioned, the, the conversion on a blocked extra point, how often do you see that returned 97 yards? Well, the Broncos, punt return. Broncos have not rushed for a touchdown yet tonight. We haven't seen that. <laughs> Maybe here would be a we good have. opportunity. Third and two for the Broncos. This is a big one. They need to keep the chains moving. Zabransky, the play fake, and he's got some room, cuts it back inside, and it's going to be a first down. Broncos up to the 37, and a huge first down conversion with 2.09 to go. Boy, Hawaii had bottled up the middle, and Zabransky really sells this play fake to Lee Marks. Not as good as I thought, but, <laughs> but good now enough. that I see it again, but good enough. From, from Hawaii's vantage point, it was a good sell job. Hawaii has just burned their second timeout, so that means with 2.04 to play, if the Broncos can move the chains one more time, it's really going to be close to wrapping it up. The Broncos with a 23-point fourth quarter and the weirdest 23-point fourth quarter I've ever seen. An that, amazing game, That uh, two-point conversion return by Orlando Skandrick, the first for Boise State since 1996. Amazing. And, and only their second ever. And the funny thing is, we were actually talking about that, uh, the fact that uh, you don't see that very often. And here we are tonight with uh, a blocked extra point I, I was for a conversion. When we were talking about that, I was talking about one in 1990 at Montana State that Boise State had that turned the game and uh, allowed the Broncos to win. It, it was a... a Four point, uh, let's see, three point turnaround that, that gave the Broncos a victory at Montana State in 1990. That was by Elijah George, the former Bora Lion. Barry Glanville on the sidelines, and there's Dan Hawkins, and here we go. First and 10 Broncos. It's at their 37. They need to, need to work on the clock here. And the give is to Ian Johnson. Gets it out to the 40, gain of about three. And Hawaii just burned their last time out with 1.57 to play. So now the Broncos will keep it on the ground and they will be very deliberate when they get up off the pile. Very much. And with 1.57 to go here, and uh, Hawaii burning all of their timeouts, uh, Broncos pretty much in control of their own destiny if they can move these chains one more time. Well, they need one first down, obviously. And get out of here because uh, this game has been a wild one. And as we've mentioned all night long, a 26-game whack win streak on the line. Talking to Coach Hawkins, he doesn't pay attention to that stuff. But clearly, the other teams in the whack do. And uh, Hawaii definitely here tonight brought their game faces. And Colt Brennan, how about his night, Tom? 426 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. One of those returned for a touchdown by Marty Tadman. So every star player tonight 
has a good side and a bad side. Orlando Skandrick with the uh, the touchdown and the two-point conversion return. He was burned on a 73-yard touchdown pass. Colt Brennan with the four touchdowns. He had an interception return for a touchdown. Quinton Jones, the 92-yard <laughs> punt return. He fumbled on his next uh, attempt, and, and uh, Hawaii turned that into a TD. Second and seven, Broncos at their own 40-yard line. They need to move the chains. And the give is to Antoine Carter, and he pulls ahead for a couple of yards. It's going to bring up third down, and what a big third down it's going to be, Tom, with the clock ticking. No timeouts left for Hawaii. They haven't reset the, the play clock yet. And look at the, the point distribution as you were talking about, Tom. Crazy. Okay, the play clock is now running 20 seconds left, so they can take it down to about... 114-113 before they snap this ball. And again, folks, if they convert here, Hawaii doesn't have any timeouts. This is the ball game if they can convert. Third and five Broncos. The give is to Lee Marks. And Lee Marks has the first down close to it. I think they're going to give him the spot. Game, set, match. And that is going to do it, folks. Lee Marks with a clutch run moves the chains Hawaii won't be able to snap it and the Broncos gonna get out of here escape I am not believing that this has happened and Tom I'm as I mentioned so reminiscent of the Tulsa and San Jose State games where they just get involved in a crazy shootout and uh, and it looks like the Broncos again are gonna come out on top as they're gonna sit on it and get out of here Jared Zabransky on the knee. Hawaii played such a great game. And, Very inspired. And 556 yards of total offense. Amazing Handled game. the Boise, uh, Boise State defense very well. The, uh, the Hawaii defense played well, but Boise State did turn it up a notch in the second half with almost a 300-yard second half. And from what I've seen here tonight, Hawaii with Colt Brennan doing what he's doing, I think they're going to be a factor all season long in the WAC, and that's going to do it. As the clock now is going to wind down and the Broncos escape. 27 straight in the WAC now, 14 straight on the road in conference. It is final. The Broncos win 44-41, and what a ball game. A very quick handshake between Dan Hawkins and June Jones. Broncos get back to 500. They are now 2-2. Two and two. We'll come back to wrap it up from Honolulu after this. There's one place where sports' hottest athletes mix with the glamour of Hollywood. Hey, I'm Andy Roddick. Welcome to my party. ESPN Hollywood takes you inside the celebrity lives of sports' top stars. Still got a lot of offers to do movies. The spotlight. It's almost like walking around with Brad Pitt. The set. That's Reggie Jackson. The shoot. And everything Hollywood. David Beckham, he fit really nicely in Mysterio Lane. ESPN Hollywood. Weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. ESPN Fantasy Football is so easy to use. Yeah, and it doesn't require a major time commitment. And we love the camaraderie it engenders. The way we're talking is so weird. This room and our clothes. Brandy, Randy, Candy, I don't think we exist. What, what do, do you mean, mean, Sandy? I think we're just part of some guy's fantasy, and whoever he is, he obviously loves ESPN Fantasy Football, and we're just icing on the cake. Ooh, oh. there's cake? <sighs> ESPN Fantasy, Fantasy Football. Play for free at ESPN.com slash Fantasy Football. A great sportscaster once promised to tell it like it is. Not quite. Because first you have to tell it like it was. Every weeknight, Classic Now will take breaking sports news and give it to you with a deep perspective and backstory from yesterday to today and back. All in one show. I'm Josh Elliott. Join me for Classic Now, where the past is always present. 7 and 11 p.m. every weeknight, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic Now. One of college football's most celebrated coaches. One of ESPNU's most insightful shows. Now they're joining forces. Coaching legend Lou Holtz joins ADT College Coaches Spotlight, covering the week that was and the week ahead in college football. I'm here because of the fans. With all the breakdowns and press conferences. There are no neutral observers on this game. Lou Holtz joins ADT College Coaches Spotlight, Tuesdays at a new time, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN News. 
president's a massive stroke. The vice president assumes the presidency. Why do you want to be president? The answer is that you want the power to control the universe. That's not me. Well, that's the problem. People who don't want power have no idea how to use it when they have it. I want you to resign. I'm going to run this government. Gina Davis, Donald Sutherland, Commander-in-Chief, premieres Tuesday, September 27th, 9, 8 central, followed by the season premiere of Boston Legal, only on ABC. Saturday, the Broncos take on the Vikings of Portland State University. Be sure to join us for the complete coverage live from Broncos Stadium. Our telecast begins at 6 p.m. Mountain Time right here on Idaho's News Channel 7. You can also watch the action on KTFT 38 Twin Falls and KSKN Spokane's WB22.